to another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders coming at you live on Monday night. I'm Will. I'm Matt. And tonight we're going to be talking about American single malts. And we're sorry, Sarah's not here. I guess she's not feeling well tonight. So just me and Will have to entertain you. So we'll do our best. Yeah. So as I think a lot of you know that uh, unfortunately YouTube changed Google Hangouts as we all wonderfully found out on Thursday night that it was a drastic change and did not work out well for us. So uh, unfortunately, we're not able to do Westland night on Thursday. But the good news is that Matt will be back from the distillery in about three months, and we will film with them. So we will get that done just unfortunately about three months later than we expected to. So good news is we still had an awesome event with them that night and had a fantastic dinner and to try a lot of really cool new stuff that he brought with him at distillery only. So like the Reverie. Brought that, brought some peat week, and then we also had all three Garianos as well. So that was an awesome event. So, all right. Thanks so, who is in the chat tonight? All right. Hey, Eric Wait, how's it going? Thanks, everybody. Check out Eric if you're not already in there. Ed from the Rock Cut Review, check him out too as well. Let's see who else. Mark Goyne, Spencer Mav, Stellar Matrix, Travis Waller. Uh, let's see here. Andrew Sparrell, Donald Rance, William Devilar. All right, so that's in support. So yeah, so it's we know it's probably a late night for everybody. Hey, Tech One Eighty Seven and Charles Ashworth coming in. So we'll see how it all goes this evening. And so if this is our first time with the, this yard stream or what, stream yard, whatever the heck this thing is called, yard stream stream or whatever it is. Um, so we'll see how this works because uh, we really don't know. So it looks like everything is interesting. So we'll see. So hope hey Bill, go check out the whiskey dick. Obviously, hey Ice House. So hopefully everything will work out okay here. And uh, I don't know how this is all going to work, but we hope it'll work out pretty well. And so let's start, let's start drinking some whiskey here. Let's, so I think we'll start off with, I think, the classic uh, Balcona single malt, one of the very first single marks to start coming out. And there's not, you know, the first one obviously in Texas, it's also the first distillery since Prohibition in Texas. And one of my absolute favorites. So might as well start out with one I really love. I like your thinking. So, might as well, exactly. So, it's a lovely 14-month-old Texas single malt, hot still. Um, obviously, it's in a beautiful, dark-colored new oak from Texas. It's a beautiful thing. And, Will, do you want to go over the, uh, since you're the terms guy, I'll let you cover the definition of American single malt. So with American single malts, it has to be at least 51% malted barley uh, as the dominant grain. Uh, it has to be made at one distillery, um, and it has to be put in new oak, which is uh, an interesting thing that I'm not a big fan of, but that's the law, and so there it is. There are groups of people that um, have formed to make new laws for what is considered a, an American single malt. Uh, trying to push for legislation of 100% malted barley. Uh, and then I think another one is that they, they want to just be able to use oak. So I'm really hoping that that gets passed. But. So am I, for sure. Yeah, you know, and plus what's nice is, you know, these are all pretty, pretty much everything we're going to drink tonight is all going to be 100% barley, which yeah. is like the definition is 51, but these are all 100%. So, which I think is going to be really nice. And so we like them. You don't have to define it 100% or anything, but I think, it's better, but they you know it's personal opinion, obviously, as far as what it tastes like. Um, we had a few of the people join us in here who just joined in here. Oh, hey, Dylan, Jesse Page. All right, so we got a couple more. All right, excellent. So, is everybody else drinking uh, American single malts tonight? Let us know in the chat what you guys are drinking this evening. Oh, I just love this one. Yeah, this was the first uh, single malt that I had that wasn't uh, a Scotch or Irish. Me too. I mean, it's just delicious. Yeah, I really, really like this a lot. Um, the cast strength one, there's also a version that you can do a pick of. A lot of stores do picks of this one. Usually it's like in the 60 to 65 range on the percentage. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. it'll, it, it will let you know for sure. It's, it's high ABV, but it's damn tasty. Hey, Trey, thanks for coming in. Travis was uh, saying that it has to be aged in new American oak for an unspecified amount of time, but after that, it doesn't matter. Uh, the only issue with that is, is that if you take it out of that new American oak, you can no longer put an age statement on it, uh, which, you know, again, just it just ties hands for 
to me, no reason, but you know. Right. Painting my motorcycle gas tanks are currently. That's good, Dylan. I'm glad you're huffing fumes of your motorcycle. That sounds very healthy. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. But yeah, so Andrew Spur wants is there anyone doing a hundred percent malted barley single malt? Well, yeah, that's what all this stuff is. So I'm, I'm sure I, I assume that's the question. He's hey Steve, thanks for coming in. I assume that's your question, Andrew, or you're, there's something else I'm missing because that's what your question says. So I'm going Yeah, to the law says that it has to be fifty one percent malted barley, but everything that we have in front of us that we're has, tasting tonight is hundred percent. Uh, all of these distillers are sticking with uh, the spirit of what a single malt has always been, uh, which is 100% malted barley. Hey, Troy, thanks for coming in. Yeah, art, not, yeah, and that's true. Now, like Ed says, you know, they're using the term of art rather than legal definition. That's true. So there, there's a bunch of the uh, single malt distilleries around the country that are getting together to define single malt malt so that you can't just throw a bunch of crap in there and go, oh, it's a single malt, and it's really not. It's kind of yeah. like when Westland was here, uh, they were talking about since it's not a legal definition that you know that the word on here whiskey is the part that matters the, the part that says American single above it they don't really care about so as far as TTB is concerned so it's an interesting definition of all that hey robot Scott thanks for coming in all right mm. so oh, Travis Travis is talking about the Cedar Ridge line and uh, how oh, okay. don't matter. I'm with you, Travis. I don't. I don't feel like age statements really make any difference at all. But there is a large number of the whiskey community that care only about age statements. So oh, you have to cater to those cool. people too. Sometimes Eric makes a cool point. This is apparently you can click in the comments or a question to highlight them and it'll pop up in the banner. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's funny. All right, that's a cool new feature. I did not know that existed. I think age in America would be crazy. Well, this one has 14 months. I mean, that is an age statement. It's a very young <laughs> age statement, but 14 months, it's fantastic. So I think let's move on to uh, – you want to do the rum cast finish or the Mirador next? I think the Mirador. All right. So this is Mirador, which is also a um, Texas single malt. But the difference in this one, this is actually aged in used Hungarian oak. So compare the color – of this to this, you know, that's a pretty drastic difference in color. So it's quite a bit tasty to click in stream yard. Oh yes, Colkagan, oh, another fantastic distillery mm -hmm. for sure out there in uh, New Mexico and Del Bac out in Arizona, both also making fantastic single malts. Let's see, new high yeah, I've, and Trey, I've not had the new High Plains single malt. Um, Hopefully some. Oh yeah, wait. Carl did give me a sample. I, I, it's it's in a vial though. I don't think I've, I haven't tried, haven't spent any time with it yet. But as far as actually having a ball, I don't have one. So uh, Eric was responding that um, the U.S. should use the same definitions of single malt as Scotland uses to avoid confusion. Uh, Eric, agreed. I don't think I could possibly agree with you more. Yeah, I think uh, they should. I think really should. awesome if we could get them on board with that. I think the only thing, the only definition I would not use from Scotland is the three year. Because yeah. what we can do with it. Other than that, as far as the barley content, yes. How about a little Reverend Oak? Wine? Yes, I would love to try. I would love to try the uh, Reverend Oak heated port wine finish. <laughs> Unfortunately, pretty sure that one's dist distiller and we don't have that one. So yes, lovely Canadian single malts. Oh, Glen Breton Ten's really good. The other ones I've tried, not so fantastic. Hopefully, Donald will uh, be able to change that up for us and give it, give us some good ones to try, for sure. Hey, DJ11, thanks for coming in. I just do the high planes. High planes is so much better. Well, that's very nice, Travis. I'm glad you got a bottle. It's always a plus. Hey, oh, man. Franklin, Franklin's Oh, all in on Franklin's Backyard Barbecue, barbecue Pre-Order. Oh, yeah, so I guess down in Austin, Mark... Goins is setting up a pre-order for Franklin's Barbecue, apparently, for uh, Friday. So I guess if anyone wants to hit him up over on Discord, you're more than welcome. Hey, William Dunham, thanks for joining in. So the proof on uh, the Mirador is actually slightly, and I do say slightly higher, than the uh, Balcones yeah. regular release Texas single malt. Um, 
and I'm assuming because of the used oak, the proof tastes much lower. Um, yeah. It's just not nearly as spiky. Yeah, it's, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. smoother. But smoother. there's a little more heat on the back end of on the finish of this one than you get on the – even like you said, it's only a slight difference. Yeah. But it's – I really, I really love it. The funny thing is with this one, I don't know if you picked this up, is you get a little bit of like a Dr. Pepper flavor on the nose. Of that like that creamy mm -hmm. cherry. It's it's very interesting for a single malt to have that nose in it. It's at least 13 of the 23 flavors. <laughs> at least. Mm. And I agree, Steve, eh, that uh, three years in Scotland is like nine months in Texas. Absolutely. There's, there's no doubt about that. For sure. Oh, it's tasty. So who in the chats had Mirador? I've been lucky to have enough to have tried it. I guess that's another question. Dylan says eight and then shit. Sorry. Okay, that's good, Dylan. Very nice. Oh, it's tasty, though. So I do love this stuff. Yeah. Oh, so Eric's had it. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ed, what do you think of the... Uh, the single malt here of Mirador from Texas. And perfect. Mark Goins is actually drinking it. Nice. Hey, Matt. Thanks for coming in. No problem letting you try it. That's that's our buddy Matt that used to work here at Goody Goody in college. Well, now living up in Michigan. So thank God for that guy. Got a lot of cool stuff because of him. Mm. Oh, it's good. Tribe six one. Ooh, yes. The Texas blend. Now, the bottle's waiting for us down there. No, wait, Ben picked that up. Yeah, I have it here, but we tr I haven't opened the bottle, but we did try it with Emma uh, in mm -hmm. the barrel house. It was fantastic. That's for sure. Oh, you finished a bottle of Mirador. So probably making new Mirador again some point this year, which is fantastic. So it's, yeah, exactly how we'll say it. Without Mirador, life will just be sad. So I, I really love Mirador, so it's a good one. See, DJ11 says, did you hear La Quinta sold out? I hear that, but then I see people booking it every day. So I don't know if it's technically sold out now or not. Because I will have booked it today. So I'm not really sure if that's true or not. Or if it's a certain I think day. like with a lot of other hotels, you book and then they release and you book yeah. and then people release. So if you like Mark's saying, they had rooms today. Yeah. Uh, it's probably time of day that you're checking. Okay. Here, I, so if I click Eric's comment, I want to talk about so Eric says he's drinking a Caden Hen Classic Highland Pure Malt. It's a dusty. Unfortunately, the cork broke when it opened it, but I've got a filter, so I'm good. Yeah, so let's talk about corks. Stop using them, damn it. Synthetic is just fine. Exactly. It's fine. Synthetic is great. Synthetic's great. Screw tops are great. Not the cheap plastic ones, you know, the hard, you know, the hard ones like, like Westland uses here. They use hard plastic. This is what everyone should use. This. This a nice rubber on the all inside. People should use this. No more freaking corks. Shit. This does not it's, there's no way to break this. Unless I break the bottle itself, it's not gonna happen. And still then I don't think it breaks. Yeah, I know Stellar Matrix knows about the, how the freaking cork broke. Oh happened just the other night when we were drinking um what was that that when we opened up? The uh, Glen Keith, a signatory Glen Keith. Sheared right off. That was fantastic. There's nothing worse than, like Eric says, getting a filter and sucking all the freaking cork out of your whiskey. Now it has to be, you know. Especially your expensive whiskey that you're basically adding air yeah. to. It never fails. That's the one it happens to. Because yep. I was a bottle that sat around for a long time. It's like it's a dusty or whatever. It's just the way it goes. Yeah, I wish, like I said, all the. Hey, Andy, thanks for coming in. The first one is why they're yes, that's true, Andy. We did we did hear about that. They are corrected that problem. The new one. Hey, Master Job just joined us. Everybody, check out him out. Yeah, I'm already joined him. Him. Uh, but yeah, so on the Westland things, I guess they fixed that with this new batch. That will not be a problem anymore, apparently, for their caps. So thank God for that. Yeah, they got that feedback. They fixed that problem. Is what he said. Yeah, that's always a good thing. So, no, it's a good time. You know. All right, so. Let's move on to the – now, this is a distillery-only exclusive. If you've, This is the Texas Single Malt Whiskey Rum Cast Finish. So they make a rum also down at, at uh, Balcones that is phenomenal. I've got – I think the bottle I got is like 68.3%. 
So, uh, but yeah, so this one is 63.5%, and this is a pretty tasty treat. So if you ever got a chance to try it or go down there and see it, totally buy it on the spot. And at pretty much all of the silver releases that uh, Balconers are about $80 and <laughs> worth every penny. This one is, uh, yeah, like he was saying, finished in rum casks, 63.5%. That sweetness hits you right up front, as does the proof. See, Eric, you're right. What alcohol isn't phenomenal? You're right. There aren't any. They're all phenomenal. It's an excellent point. Hey, Tony, thanks for coming in. Oh, William says that rum finishes always come off as uh, tart to him. I can, I can actually completely understand that. That slight feeling back here. Uh, right behind my jaw and and that usually hits me with pretty much any rums yeah hey jason hey sweet tea 1985 it's coming in guys appreciate it yeah i can see it with your because your rums you know with your obviously with the sugar um i can see i guess the tartness but i love a rum cast finish personally so i've had now as far as single malts go um it says, you know, I guess you you can have, I guess, bourbon or rye finish on rum cast too. Some of them have been okay, and some have been just too damn sweet for me. Yeah. Some of them have been really good, though, especially sure. the ryes. Yeah, because, I mean. I've, like, I've enjoyed ryes finished in rum a lot more than bourbon finished in rum. I agree with you on that completely. Yeah, I think it's because of the, the spiciness that it helps tamp it down a little bit. Whereas with bourbon, it just makes it too damn sweet. It's just really yeah. cloying. I just don't like that. It's not for me. Agreed. So, I don't like rum. It's a finishing option. Yes, no doubt it is. Oh, it smells so good. Mm, mm, mm. But yeah, so this one, definitely you get the proof. Definitely uh, let you know it's there. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit sweeter, but it's a really nice finish on it. But it's not yeah. that it's not a sickly sweet. It's just a really nice accent piece to it. And just yeah, it's, it's quite tasty though. I really enjoy it. So you got like I said, if you guys ever get a chance to get a bottle of this or just even try it, do it because it's it's great stuff. To me, this uh, the sweetness kind of polishes off some of the spiky proof edges. Yes, absolutely. All right, that's actually a good question. Let's highlight that. So, Ice House is asking about, has anybody had the Corsair Triple Smoke? The ingredient bottle in a couple of weeks. Yes, it is great. If, if you like smoke, it's, and it's a lot of smoke. That's not what it says, Pete. It's just a ton of smoke because they use different woods to smoke it. It's really tasty. Um, but that's, you know, if, if anybody else has ever had it, let them know in the chat. But I really like that Corsair. Are we talking like brimstone levels of ant, like uh, liquid smoke? Or are we talking like just Andalusia and um, Del Hawk? And I would really say it's kind of combo of both. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of it's a little bit of both, but I, I think it's pretty tasty though. Yeah, and he's right. Jared Hem said is distiller of the year. Absolutely, making some fantastic stuff for sure. Mm. You love that stuff. Yes. It's a shame uh, that's a unicorn. Ten inch Newtonian. Oh, it must be cigars. I don't know. I don't know anything about cigars, but I will defer to people in the chat that do. I can only had be nerd about one thing in life. So this is it. So all right, so let's see. Let's what we go to now. You want to do Stranahan's or you want to do Westland? Let's go to Stranahan's next. I haven't I haven't tasted Stranahan's in quite a while. All right. All right, so this is standard Stranahan's standard uh, expression that is 94 proof. Also it's as a 100% barley. Um, it's two years in new charred oak. This one's from Colorado. Um, and they were one of the first distillers. Basically, they're the reason the Colorado distilling industry exists because they went and got legislation changed for the state of Colorado to allow distilling. So, yes, everybody can pretty much thank Strana Hands. And Westland is like the major forefathers in putting down a lot of the single malt in this country. But yeah. Thank them if you like Colorado whiskey. And Colorado makes we'll, we'll do definitely do a Colorado night for sure at some point. The Colorado's got amazing whiskey, but yeah, this is one of the other ones I uh, actually really fell in love with as far as 
That's Travis, is asking, Travis is asking if I plan on bringing bacon to La, La Quinta. Um, maybe, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure if there's going to be enough bacon for it. Uh, I am plan on, planning on walking around uh, the entire Bastards Ball with bacon in my pocket at all times. <laughs> So, uh, and just constantly pulling out pieces of bacon from random pockets and eating it. So, um, I don't know. We will see. Maybe some bacon will make it to La Quinta. It's, it's possible. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Hey, Jason Grizek, thanks for coming in. So, Eric wants to know, have you read any books by Royal Williams? I'm reading two, and I can see the Rex gets his uniqueness. I have not, but I, I really probably should since he's apparently like a freaking marketing genius. I really yes. probably should read his books because – He's, as far as I know, the highest paid ad man in the entire – It could I know it's the country. It could be the world for all I know. But I don't think the guy is a freaking genius. I mean, if you've been to the Wizard Academy, you already know the guy's a genius. I mean, the intricate detail just of everything in the tower alone, not to mention anywhere else on campus, yeah. it's insane. I mean, the fact that, like, you know, the uh, the spindles are on the stairs – or not stairs, whatever, you know, looking over the classroom – uh, you can, if you hit them all in order, it sings the impossible dream to you. I mean, how freaking awesome is that? I mean, it's just, it's insane. That place is awesome. Yeah, I do need to read his stuff. Ooh, and he almost bought a snowflake. Oh, you should have done that. I heard such great things about the snowflake. I've not had. Oh, me too. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, so good. Uh, Donald is asking if there's a discernible difference between American whiskey regions. I've never had any American single malts. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, I don't know that there are enough <laughs> distillers making American single malt for us to categorize them by region like we have done so far with like re, uh, like bourbons. Um, I don't know. Texas definitely brings the heat. Um, it brings a lot of oak intensity quickly. Um to whereas people up in the north tend to be able to sit on their casks for quite a bit longer. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know that there's enough information out there to make that judgment yet. Well, for my personal At least palate, not with the 12 I have in front of me. I will say the yes. There's a discernible difference. And like we'll say, basically the reason is the climate is, is quite different from Texas compared to Washington, Oregon, California or ones up in New York or Iowa, the climate is so vastly different. So you will find different, you will find similar profiles on each of the different regions of the United States for sure on the single malts. So I, I answer your question is yes. And you just, and the best way to do it is go buy a bunch and see what you like, or go try them in a bar. You know, it might be a little bit cheaper. Right. Although not by much sometimes. Well, that's true. You're right. Cause sometimes it might, cause like, okay, so here's, here's an example, like this bottle of, uh, Strain of hands. I think, you know, the bottle's 50 bucks. Yep. Um, but if you go to a bar, a lot of bars charge like $12. Like, you might as well buy the bottle. I mean, for the price. I mean, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me from a, my standpoint. Yeah, the, the, okay. bar, around the, the yeah. bar around the the corner from my work is probably closer to 18 for that mm. for a single pour of that. So, I mean, again, yeah, sometimes just freaking buy the bottle. Yeah, for real. So, the Stranahan's yellow label, um, I think my second American single malt I ever tried, and I really, really fell in love with it. Absolutely. Um, as soon as I tried the black, however, I immediately found a funk uh, on the yellow label, and it was because it was absolutely not present in the in the Diamond Peak is the only reason why I found it in the yellow to begin with. Do you okay. find it at all? you know about what I'm talking about? We'll pour them together. Let's see. Yep. I don't know. I, I haven't had these two together in, my gosh, probably a couple of years. Let's see here. All right. So this is the Diamond's Peak, which, you know, your slightly better uh, version, obviously. And so this is the, what does it say? It's selected from the oldest cast at the master. What's his name? It's Robert. Is Rob Dietrich. So this is a char level three in American Oak. Of course, it's all non-chill filtered, the beautiful mountain water, of, of course. But yeah, so this is basically the better cast, more or less. There are um, single uh, barrels you can get of these two. I don't have any, but I have seen them started to show up single barrels of this. So I'll be interested to try them and compare for sure. Oh, you're right. There is a funk on that. 
that you don't when you don't get on the diamond. Oh wow, I didn't notice that. Interesting. I was wondering if I was the only one. Travis, yes, I was talking about Silverleaf, the little cigar bar right there. Oh. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, so I visit there pretty frequently. The diamond I like, I like them a lot. I'm trying to think. It's not that much more expensive. It's like another twenty bucks. Like five or six. You can get five or six some places. Well, well then buy this one then. If that's it, that's a difference. Forget. Don't buy the yellow. Buy the black one. Yeah. yeah. To the the Stranahan's yellow to uh, where I see it normally is about fifty, and it the Diamond Peak is fifty five to fifty six. So I mean, like to me, it's a no brainer. Get the. Yeah, sounds like it. So Cooper fifty seven says. Talking about American single malt, anyone's mentioned the Hill Rock Estate single malt. It's peated floor malts of onsite. Mm. Okay, that sounds great. I'd love you to send us some because I would love to try that. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I have not had that. That sounds awesome. I would love to love to try that. But, yeah, thanks for coming in, Cooper. Thanks, Luis. Vegas Arts coming. All right. Let's see. But, yeah, that, that, that sounds really – that would be right up my alley. Um yeah, that's Lewis, we got the Sherry uh, strand of hands coming up next. I'll tell you all about it in just a second. Yeah, so I would say I would definitely rank the Don Peak as sniffingly better. And like at a bar, this may even be like 15 or 16. Same thing, order this one. Yeah, Vegas Art saying that they they get a, a funk on all the strand of hands. Interesting. All right, so let's, let's pour the Sherry cask. So it's exactly what it says. It's a single yeah. malt Sherry yeah. cask finish. So... I believe the same thing. And this is Oloroso Sherry, and this one's four years old. So this will be a little bit more interesting. I haven't had this one in a while either. So, because I remember when I originally opened up this one, it did have a funk on it, and I wasn't a giant fan of it. People had asked if I wanted to get this one. I was like, eh, I had it. I, I'm good. I don't really need it ever again because this wasn't that great. I wasn't that impressed at the time. Yeah, my father bought this one thinking that I was going to fall in love with it uh, because I was a big fan of the Diamond Peak. Yeah, once you compare the black to the Diamond Peak to the, the Sherry, it's got that same funk that that the yellow has. It's not Yeah, it's, it's like basically the yellow with the Sherry cast finish, so it's got that weird funk on it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, yes, Cooper 57. Absolutely, that sounds phenomenal. Yeah, you try the distillery. Very nice. So if anybody wants to go down there, we'd love to take that one. That's for sure. More than happy to take donations of like that kind. Mm. Always. The answer is always yes. Do I want to try whiskey from everywhere in the world? Any state, yes. Absolutely. Good or bad, I still want to try it because I think, you know, the variety is the spice of life for sure, and you should try as many whiskeys as absolutely possible. <laughs> DJ's uh, asking if you have more bottles in the whiskey vault. Not quite. Yeah, not quite. We're getting there. We're, We're trying. Or close enough. Okay, see, Eric, you're lucky. You live in California, and you can get online delivery. Us poor souls in Texas, not an option. Let's, except for the one site from the Netherlands that for some reason delivers here. It's, it makes – I have no idea how that works. Don't care, but it works like a – oh, and also, DJ, the question – you're answering your question. It's the, it's the one that's at 4424 Mopac. That's the uh, address of that La Quinta you're looking for that everybody's staying at. Okay, so on the taste, the sherry cask is, is it's got a little bit of the funk on it, but it's better than the uh, the all label. But the the uh, the diamond peak is by far superior. Yeah, I enjoy the berry notes that that the sherry cask uh, introduces, though it it does bring forth um, a plum, a raisin, almost a fig note into it. So Eric wants to know if he wants some glyph. I hear horrible things, but I will absolutely try it because I haven't had it, Eric. I will I will take you up on that offer. Don't know a thing. I, I just know you you tell it. I think you feel about Glyph how I feel about TX Bourbon. Pretty confident we're in the same category. But if it's just as bad, we'll have to head to head. Who's worse? So it's worth trying. Bend the rules of shipping. We don't talk about those things, Andy. It's not... It's a gift. It's received in person, tracked. Someone, you know, brings it to you. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Oh, Louisiana has uh, shipping? I didn't know that. Oh, cool. Good to know. 
That's oh, not right. that bad. Lift to Austin. Yeah. So the yeah. So real the real question would be what's worse, T X Bourbon Glyph, Johnny Walker Red or Johnny Walker White Walker? That's the real question. And I think that's the price of admission to a Lakita party. You have to drink one of them. <laughs> one Malort. <laughs> a bottle of Malorts too. Oh, absolutely. We have to have Malorts. We'd be disappointed yep. if we didn't. Yep, yep. Yeah. Anybody that's ever been here knows that that's part of the initiation coming into our our whiskey club is you have to do a shot of Malorts. <laughs> and it, it is god awful, by the way. Um, but you still have to do it anyway. Yep. Some of us had to do it more than once. Not my problem. I suppose we didn't have to do it more than once. I, I got maybe yeah, I maybe it. got a little bit too drunk at Matt's house and was persuaded to do it a second time. Well, was, that's Tuttle for you. He does things like that. Glyph is far worse than Giant Walker Red. Ooh, it must be really bad because Giant Walker Red was awful. Just that was awful. really bad stuff. Oh, because yeah, our probably in a couple of weeks our review will come out. Oh, speaking of reviews, so we decided that since we were doing Monday night streams, that it was kind of silly to release our Monday night, our Monday morning reviews. So we're going to start switching over to releasing them on Tuesdays mornings, and then we're going to do a second one every, each one. I don't know if it's going to be Thursday or Friday, but we'll start doing two every week from now on to uh, pump out some more great. Uh, stuff for you guys, and so hopefully you guys will enjoy having two a week from us instead. Yeah. No shots of Jack Daniels. It's terrible. No, we won't be doing that. We don't do shots. That's that's not this stream. You want a different stream. That's that's not our stream. So on progress. <laughs> they do things like that. <laughs> and, there, and, and I know they're not in here tonight, but uh, happy anniversary to uh, Sam and Bobby tonight as well. Indeed. So, for sure. Ooh, yes. High West. Yeah, DJ One Run. Yeah, High West and Woodenville are fantastic. I do like those. I'll find the match. Click that button. Sorry. All right. So, yes, yeah, we finally figured. Our only problem with our videos, and, and Eric will let you know, is, yeah, our lighting not been so great lately. We'll freely admit that. We are, we're going to try to fix that when we film here next. We've gotten some uh, professional help advice on how to change our lighting situation for sure we're seeking professional help eric i promise we are <laughs> <laughs> eric speaking of the baller that that we will do be doing that one this evening so it's uh it's right here so we are definitely doing the baller this evening for sure matt asked me if i had tried it i said i haven't even seen that i don't know what the hell that even is so i'm excited to to know more about it when we get to it absolutely the Hell Rock and Cheap's 80 the store. Yeah. I'm like, I'm totally over this port finish. Port finish rise 130. That's getting up there. I mean, I'm not opposed to paying that for good whiskey. Um, but you know, as a rule, generally that is fairly expensive for whiskey in general. But I'm certainly not opposed to it. Shots of pre-diluted Kentucky whiskey is bad. Hey Jason, thanks for shining. I haven't seen you in a while. Awesome. Thanks for coming in. Yes, Travis, the baller. Which is it? Fantastic name for a whiskey, everyone. I think yeah, it is. for sure. So, do you want to move on to those uh, three one-offs, the Westward and the Baller and the um, McCarthy, or you want to go to uh, Westland, Westland because now. the other ones are so vastly different? Yeah, and I think it will ruin your palate if we do them first. Heard that. So, I think we got to do the other one. Well, let's talk about some uh, Westland American. It's true, Eric. I agree, but it's such got a unique flavor profile on it. All right, let's do dump this in here. All right, let's do. I guess let's do the American. I think that's the logical one to start with. Yeah, and then Sherry, and then Pete. Yeah. <sighs> mm hmm. All right. Let's see. So this is Westland. So this is like I said. This is one of the. I would basically call one of the founding fathers of American single malt for sure. These yeah. guys have been around for about 10 years now. Um, good night, Spencer Mav. Do what? I said good night, Spencer Mav. Oh, good night, Spencer. All right. So, anyway, so it kind of looks like I said, we were lucky enough to have them over here last Thursday and got to hear some really cool stories about the distillery and learn a lot of cool, neat stuff. So most of these are three to five years old, uh, put together, 
and it's just a you know a blend of them. So it's at least three. And they were lucky enough to have very wealthy backers and be able to put down whiskey and wait, which is really awesome for them. And now they're also part of the uh, Remy Quantro family, which is awesome. Lives them a little bit more uh, leeway, of course, with more more cash, obviously. So, yeah, this is really great stuff. Um, if you haven't tried Westland, you really should. This is some of the best uh, single malt, American single malt in the country by far. So they've taken their time. It's 100% barley. Oh, it smells so good. It's so rich. And then each one of these is also 92 proof. They keep it simple and same proof across the board. <laughs> Eric, I love your comment. The ECPB is the wow whiskey. Glyph is the is the WTF of whiskey. <laughs> yeah. This stuff must be god awful. I mean, there, he, there's nothing positive to say whatsoever. Oh, that's funny as hell. Oh, it smells so good. Yes, it does. When Westland was with us the other night, they spent a lot of time talking about um, having the ability to just sit for a long time and wait for things uh, and their investors being okay with that. Uh, they had the time to, to sit on the wood and make sure that it was air dried and not kiln dried. They had the time to sit on the whiskey for uh, five years to six years uh, before it gets bottled and put into cask in most cases. Um, so it's it's nice to know that they have investors or they had investors early on that allowed them to, you know, sit on their whiskey for a while. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's pretty nice that they didn't take any shortcuts. They don't make anything except for single malt. There's no gin. There's no vodka. There's nothing else there. They just make whiskey and they make really damn good whiskey and they do everything the right way. Like you said, air drying takes forever. Mm -hmm. But you get better, you get a better barrels. And like they said too, like, and we'll talk about here in a minute, the sherry wood, we'll tell, tell some cool stuff about that. But yeah, Westland is definitely one of my favorite distilleries for sure in the country. And they just do everything great. There's, there's, there's I've never had a bad Westland. And there's, I like Westland as much as I like Balcones. By far my two favorite single malts in the whole country. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Love this stuff. Mm. Mm -mm. Wasn't a fan of the Westland High Prairie Whiskey. It seemed too young. I don't even know what that one is. I never even heard of that. Was hey Eric? Was that a distillery only? I'm not sure. I tried Wander Back. I don't. I have not tried Wander Back, Jason. I have not tried that. But that's not what I've ever heard of, Jason. Love to try it though, but have not tried it. Mm. I do really enjoy this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's if you know, especially for getting into uh, single malts. I bought Western High Prairie here in California. Huh? Weird. Don't know. So he bought it in California. I don't know. I'll have to ask my friends that work there what uh, what that is. I'm not sure. I'll ask Justin and go. Don't know. But yeah, so if you're getting into uh, single malts, I think that Westland's actually a really good place to start. It's not. Um, overpowering. It doesn't have any of the, uh, I guess you call it a little bit of smokiness, whereas Balcones has that because you're a mm -hmm. Texas oak. This doesn't have it. This is just a really nice, complete whiskey. I mean, it's got a nice color on it. Um, there's nothing offensive about it. It's just really nice. It's, it's just great. I mean, it's all, um, like I said, it's all snow melt, no water. It's just a beautiful, clean water. And granted, the funny thing is when they were here, they're like, yeah, water doesn't really freak them out. They're like, it's all rock, reverse osmosis. Nobody cares, which was really funny because that's the thing I really thought about. Oh, water's so important. And so it, it was a hilarious thing for him to talk about. Well, he was saying that after all the filtering processes that these distillers put their water through anyway, they're all basically ending up with the same final product. So talking about their water source really seems silly because after all the filtering and after all of the, the things that you're doing to the water, it's all the same. Oh, okay. So Eric says it is a fundraiser whiskey to preserve the Westland High Prairie Lens. Okay. That's nice. what I've never seen. Okay. That makes sense though. That's cool. No, I have never, never tried it. So now Jason asked with this wander back, is that who may, is that a Westland product or is that some other, 
excuse me, somebody else's single malt because I'm not, I don't know anything about it. Oh, they're from Oregon. Oh, okay. That answers the question up here. No, I have not. I don't never even seen that here, but certainly willing to try it. That's for sure. I assume that uh, like Christine Deans, I don't know if she's in the chat yet or not tonight or not, but I know she's from Oregon and talks about stuff like that for sure. 80% is filtered. Yeah, exactly. Like, like this is the water switch is RO filtered. So it's special. <laughs> exactly. Everybody's water special though. Absolutely. <laughs> All water special. So none of it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless you're using like, okay. Now you could, I, I guess if you got a crappy water source and did not reverse osmosis, it would be terrible. I mean, if you got like well water or raw sewage or, you know, whatever. Yeah. So that those seem like a terrible client. All right. So let's go to the sherry wood. Yes. All right. So it's a cool story on this one. So the same thing, 92. This is the sherry wood. So obviously uh, this is actually a combination of Pedro Jimenez and uh, Oloroso sherry. So what's a cool thing about this is they most places when they get their cast they break them down and they have to ship them over and whatever. Boston said, "Screw that! We'll, we'll eat the cost. Leave them together. Leave a little, you know a couple gallons of sherry in there and ship them over, so that they would actually stay wet. And when they, you know, of course they dumped out the sherry when it got here, and then they filled it with the Westland and left it in there. And so then you get one of this really really beautiful sherry wood that I really enjoy." So, you don't like this? Terrible, huh? Terrible stuff. Oh, I'm shaking my head at Dan uh, Donald Rance's question. Oh. Um, you could probably highlight that real quick, throw it up. Okay. Can I test your browsing? Yeah, oh, yeah, he's right. Yeah, he, yeah. are they worth? Ooh. Well, Canadian, that's There are, right. some, there are some Balconis products that... I would pay upwards of $80, $85 for. Um, so it's probably about right. That's not American. Well, I don't know. I didn't know. Is, is the loony worth less than the dollar? Yeah, a lot less. It's like oh, 30%. Okay. No, so that's about right. Okay. Yeah, so no, I think, Donald, I think that's okay. As long as it's a, a you know a decent one. I think you're in good shape on that price-wise, for sure. I, like I wouldn't pay 120 US for it for though. For no, sure. no, no, no. Don't pay yet. Yeah. Canadian, okay, but US, no. Don't don't pay that. Yeah, that'd be crazy. I don't drink water bottle from melting icebergs or polar bears you still live. <laughs> I agree, Eric. That sounds like good. You know, and I want a little piece of polar bear in my water too. I think that'll, that'll make it tastier, I'm sure. <sighs> filtered through polar bear fur. There you go. As opposed to White Walker filtered through veto fur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the visuals again. Yeah, he's never living that down. No matter what chat Vito ends up in, I will remind him every time I see him that he did that. Because you have to, because why would you do that? <laughs> okay, so apparently, yeah, the CAD is up to 76 cents now. The Bainbridge Yama Missouri Cast Single Grain Whiskey. Ooh, that sounds exciting. That Bainbridge that DJ One One's talking about, that sounds really tasty. Have not had that. I'm interested in trying anything from used uh, Mizanar casks, though. Yeah, absolutely. Especially a used one, something that's already imparted the flavor. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. What, what is Travis saying is uh, apparently gross. I was talking about, I don't really know what he's talking about, but that's fine. Music traders, 120 Canadian fair for Balcones if Vito is the Canadian paying for it. <laughs> yeah, as long as Vito's paying for it, absolutely fair. Well, of course, Robot Scott, that's the whole point. Ooh. Yeah. So, James Boosted, he's working with a couple friends who should now get a couple balls of the Wander back. And if he. He's able to bring them. He'll save them for the bastard's ball. All right, Jason. That sounds awesome. Hey, Dram Man. Thanks for coming in. Are you for the idea, oh, sir? Okay, let's click that, actually. William Devilar wants to know, are you both for the idea of a standard guideline requirements for his American Scamalts? Yes. Within reason that they're still able to be creative, not so rigid like bourbon and rye is that you can't be creative. 
that's my stance on it. I don't know. What's your stance on it? Um, I, I like a lot of other people, I suppose, just kind of want things to move more towards a Scotch style uh, as far as the guidelines go. Um, I don't like the idea of 51% of a grain. Agree uh, completely. But I also don't like the idea of new oak. I agree with Matt that, you know, that kind of ties distillers' hands. Yeah, you should be able to or, or used. Whatever. Either or it's fine. You get cool more variety. Like I said, variety is a spice of life. The problem is, is that we're saying that we like the idea of, you know, opening up the oak category, but we want to close the malt category down to from 51% down to 100%. So, exactly. you know, um, as of right now, most distillers that we know of are pretty, are staying pretty traditional to the styles of Scotland um, and making single malts in that style using 100% malted barley. Uh, but they do have to put it in new oak. Um, so, Definitely. It kind of ties their hands as far as that goes. Yeah, for sure. So I guess Louise yes. here. It's so got a have... Lendelo 13 year of Zanara. Excellent stuff. We tried it. Ah, that's also another good one. So he's asking if a malt whiskey um, distilled from a beer mash is a single malt. I have it... just that. This is uh, from Herman Marshall. He distilled St. Arnold's Divine Reserve beer. Uh, mm -hmm. from down in, I want to say, Houston area, um, and then put that in a cask for 22 months. Yes, 22 months. Uh, and it is a technically a single malt whiskey. And a damn but good. this one is not 100% malted barley. But it is very good. But it is really good. But said... That is such a vast difference between mm -hmm. that and English so far tonight, for sure. It's really tasty, but it would get more. Um, yeah, technically, the Temptress, which was uh, distilled from a five. milk stout, yep. uh, is also a, technically a single malt. So, you have to really like that beer, or you're going to hate that whiskey. Yeah, if you don't already like the Temptress beer, that I whiskey is probably that. not for you. Yeah, I love the Tempest beer. That's one of my favorite beers. I almost always drink that over at No Frills Grill almost every Friday night because I have problems. It's usually my winter my winter beer there. Otherwise, I drink the uh, Del Deep Ellen Blonde or Raw mm -hmm. in the summertime. That's a different story about beer. It's my favorite right now, uncut ten years. Oh yeah, so Andy was talking about that smoke wagon, which I hear good things about. Yeah, I'd love to try that smoke wagon for sure. So next time you come down for an event, Andy, bring that. I want to try that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm. Yeah, the Westland sherry is really, really nice. Yeah, absolutely. The berry sweetness that comes forward again, uh, those plum, that raisin. Uh, there's fig. Uh, this one to me actually had blackberry. Um, yeah, some wine notes in there as well. This is really yep. good. Absolutely, yeah. This is a beautiful, beautiful sherry. I, I would stack it. I mean, obviously, it's not as old as a, as a scotch. Um, but it stack up against pretty fairly, I would say, against some lighter sherry scotches for sure. Oh, and Jason, yes, I do drink Shiner, too. I have a whole fridge full of Shiner, too. I like them, too. Shiner I, I like was my beer. I was a beer guy for a long time, and Shiner Black was uh, the Bohemian. my beer of choice. Yeah, the Bohemian one's really good. The Bohemian lager. I like that one a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I will be honest. As much as I love, also love Texas whiskey, I also love Texas beer. So that's another thing in Texas wine, too. So I'm pretty much a I like Texas everything type of guy because, you know, we're Texans and that's what we do. We support our own and, you know, defend it to its death. All right, so. This is the Westland Peated Malt, which is also very nice. Also a three-year. And then these ones, this peat, of course, and these came from Scotland. But some of the newer stuff will be coming from America, which is very cool. Oh, first, yeah. So it's not a heavy peat. Um, it's really nice, though. Um Yeah, why do I see so many reviews of the best of sherry? 
two people in this car. I love it. I, I don't. I I've had what I never had any, any inconsistency problems with the sherry um, wood from them. I everyone I've ever tried has been fantastic. Oh yes, the raw ugly. Yeah, ugly pug. That's a good one too. I was never a fan of that one. You don't like that I one? Know. I do. I was also never a fan of IPA. Except, well, we'll see, you guys will see a review on it um, in a few days. The Oak and Edens raw. Yeah, that was, that was uh, great. Uh, I like Are we it. releasing that one tomorrow? Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. So you'll see that what we think of this. There's a couple of uh, finished ones. You'll see it in the review tomorrow. It's pretty cool, though. Yeah. We can give a little teaser for it for the people in the in here. Um, Oak and Eden just teamed up with uh, RAR to release two new whiskeys, a bourbon and a rye, both finished with spires that were sitting in uh, beer from RAR. Yes. Uh, and spoiler alert, they're both really yummy. Yeah. Uh, and that it's, it's probably the first beer-influenced whiskey I actually thought was better from it. Because most of the time you get these weird flavors and it's just not good. They're really, really good. I'm yeah. very happy with those products for sure. Yeah, the rye, the rye was particularly good. And again, that was rye with IPA. Yeah, two things that are very not what I like. Yeah, but which I was I, shocked to yeah. see how much we we'll like yeah, this. I found that one to be whiskey. really yummy. Yeah, and, and so like Jason says, like I generally do not like IPAs because they're just too hoppy for me. Mm -hmm. um, this one, they're called their Dadgum IPA. Is actually it's more citrusy, um, not the crazy hoppy, and it's just it, it's just really nice. And so what I did off camera was I actually drank both the beers and then poured the whiskeys into them as well because you know for science, and it was quite tasty. But yeah, so what Eric was asking about some uh, Texas wines, yeah. So Eric, you're actually going to be down in Austin, is uh, near Fredericksburg, which is where you know high is where Garrison Brothers is. Up and down that street, um, maybe was it was it one ninety two ninety whatever the highway is out there, um, they have sixty something wineries. You should definitely hit some. There's some of the best wine in the country coming from that area for sure. Yeah, so I don't know. Of course, you're a wine som. You'd know, Will. Um, I'm reading the chats. I'm sorry, Steve A was saying uh, Jameson Castmate Stout. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That was a stellar, stellar one. DJ One One, uh, the Glenfiddich, I Glenfiddich IPA was the only one in the range worth drinking. I disagree with that. I think that the 15 year Solara cask finish is a fantastic scotch, uh, but I do agree that their IPA finish is really, really yummy. Yeah, I would agree because I did not have high expectations of that one whatsoever. Um, that was actually a good whiskey, the IPA from Glenfiddich, for sure. Mm -hmm. Actually, really enjoy that whiskey and will drink that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah so definitely all those wineries. Yeah, stop. Do some reviews. Look at the reviews, Eric, when you come through the some of the uh, wineries. And if you want, I'll I'll send you an email. So ones you should stop at that are really good out there in Fredericksburg, if you'd like. Yeah, they're really good. I like some of them a lot. You don't have to like them. I like them. I also like the ones in Grapevine too. There are a couple of Grapevine distiller or Grapevine winemakers that I've found that have, you know, they're all right. I like them. I have none on my wine list though, so that's your I don't know if that tells you anything. That's okay. Hey, I seen your whiskey list. It ain't that great. That's fair. I'm not in charge of that. I know, that's my point. <laughs> it should be. It'd be better. I agree. It would also cost us a lot more, though. You might sell more whiskey. You never know. That's true. So, anyway, so, yeah. So, this Peter one, if you actually... Um, this is actually a good peated whiskey to start people on because it's just really lightly peated. It's not a heavy peat. Um, if you want to get somebody to start on a peat, have them start with these other two. That have tried these. I think that they might actually be surprised that they might actually really enjoy this. Yeah. I enjoy it. I think it, I think it's a tasty thing for sure. This was a Pete that Sarah wasn't repulsed by. Yes. See? And that's a win right there for sure. I agree. But it's just kind of a, a lingering Pete in the background. Matt, do you remember if he said that this was a Highland or if he said this was an Irish Pete? This is this is a Scottish. 
Okay, but he said, but did he say Highland Pete? Yeah, yeah, Highland. Yeah, it's not okay. Highland Pete. It's Highland Pete. I don't know. He obviously didn't say which one, but like I said, the new stuff's gonna be coming. Gonna be American Pete, which I'm really excited about. See, and he said that's the first one his wife liked was the first Pete was that he she ever liked was this one. Of course, now your wife also really likes uh, Octomore now, so that's a different story. See, it's funny because we've all corner chat. We actually have met, so it's kind of fun to, to talk about all the crazy crap all of us are into. That's right, America's Pete. Hey, Trevor, how's it going, bud? Thanks for coming in. Trevor's saying it tastes like, or no, saying it tastes like oil, though. Yeah. Well, hey, whatever, whatever's up for you, you know. It's one of those things. I thoroughly enjoy Pete. I, I mean, I am. I love Pete, but as, as you guys all know, I like all whiskeys, and there's a there's, there's only a few I find highly offensive, but you guys know which ones those are. So, are you thinking we start with the McCarthy's out of these three? Um, no, because that will this is a terrible idea. Okay. <laughs> all right, we're gonna go to Westward, which is out of Oregon. All right, so this is a very very nice uh, story in Oregon. That they've only this is from a two row barley, and this is double pot distilled, and the same thing as Don Chill filtered. It's at also ninety proof. So, which is interesting as Don Chill filtered nice. So I am assuming then at that point that if you do put an ice cube in this, you may get a little cloudiness, which I'm pretty sure most of you know this. You won't. It, it's not a problem. I mean, I, I I couldn't tell you the last time I actually had ice to a whiskey, but. You know, I wouldn't I, think so at 45. That's what everybody – it's, it's up to you. If you want to add it to your whiskey, you do whatever you want with it. So it would be interesting to see from an experimental standpoint if it does get cloudy, if you add it to ice, it being 90 rather than 92, which is generally where it doesn't get cloudy from uh, non-chill filtering. Ooh, that's going to – now. I thought it was as low as 43% that you could go without non-chill filtering. Well, I mean without it getting hazy. So I'm you saying I thought it was 43, and this one's at 45. Right. Oh, I don't know. Maybe Eric knows. Eric's the freaking genius of this stuff. I have no idea. I thought it was 92, but I could totally be wrong. Ooh. So this has got a little bit more of a funk on it compared to what we've been drinking. Yeah. But the, the funk will go away on the taste. Yeah. That's got a, a young wood note for sure, comparably. So I haven't I've only usually had this one by itself, not comparing. That's got a very young wood funk. It's a it's a young leather. It's a young wood. And smell that new oak. Okay. It's gonna taste a little bit too. <laughs> I wasn't comparing these before. I've only had it by itself. Damn it. It's not bad though. I actually do like this a lot. Um I would suggest drinking it prior to drinking other things. I mean, you know, I think it's good. Um, I don't just like it because it's funny. So they're also with Starwood out of Australia. Is this 100% malted barley? Uh, doesn't say it is. So I'm assuming it is. It says... Scratch it says made from scratch from Pacific Northwest two row barley fermented with a with ale yeast for acidic flavor. Maybe that's the funk is the ale yeast. The yeast? No, no, the funk is they use young wood. You heard a new they American use cone dried wood. They used a cooper that wasn't Yeah, funky. But it's funny, like I said, I, I had this the other day. It was fantastic. But comparing it if it, it depends on the Hudson River, it gets cloudy no matter what the you have Thanks, Eric. Eric. Super helpful. Oh, and the East River is also just as bad. <laughs> Probably worse. Hmm. It gets a little bit better in the second sip. It is oily, which is good. Yeah, I wish I had some some water here to to add. I'm gonna add a little water and see what happens. Yeah, let's let's see. Just drop a little bit of water in there. 
All right, so let's see. With water, it tamps down the greenness, brings a more baking spices out. So actually, that makes it a little bit better with the water, which is interesting at 90. Donald's asking, are all American single malts made in pot stills like in Scotland or Ireland? Uh, mm -hmm. Probably not. Although I think your better ones, yes, I would say it's true. I, it's definitely I possible. I, I, and I will say this. Um, okay, so Woodford makes a, not a single malt, but a malted whiskey that is terrible. Yes, and they do. They they should throw that shit away, but that's a different story. I will love it. I think it's disgusting. And it's, it's one of the nastiest whiskeys I've probably ever had. Our, it ranks right next to TX Bourbon. It's, it's horrible. But I, don't know, I absolutely think it's wonderful and love it, and then good for them. I think it's horrible. Not on my recommend list, for sure. So I actually would say the water actually improves the westward. But like I said, I've had this by itself on its own, and it was really good. So I'm interesting. Getting the temperature of the water could make a difference whether or not it's Huh. Interesting. I guess that's a good thing we should do for science maybe one of these days. Do an episode on that. Whiskey wine will drop on it. Oh, Travis, I do. I'm just too lazy to get out for live streams. Because that's just too much freaking work. Uh, and I'm sure you don't bring a water dropper with me uh, when we when we film. That's true. You do. Because just in case it's ruined, we will we will we'll ruin it for himself. Just in case. Somebody's got to take one for the team. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, Andy was saying he's got some funk on. Um, I saw that too. Red Breast 21. Yeah. I've never had any fun with Rush 1 ever. Red Breast 21 is one of the best movies ever made. Yeah, I've, I've not. not Rush 21. I've not ever had that experience either. No. It's always been that old. Good. It doesn't make any difference. But, you know, that's just what I found in my case. Somebody was asking about Del Bach and Cold Cake and up here where they want to know. Yes, William, they are. Coke and Dubach are both um, single malts. They're both great. I have both of them. They're, if we get finished with all these, I'll be more than happy to pull them out and talk about them for sure. Um, that gave you cool. You got the Cole Kagan to your house, right, Will? I don't. You don't want to give you those yet? Mm -mm. Damn it. Next time I'll give you some more. All right. All right. Let's go to. This beautiful, this is one of the one of the coolest freaking bottles ever made. So Eric was talking about this. This is the baller, St. George's. All right, so this is finished in a type of Japanese plum. I can't remember what Eric can probably put in the chat what it's actually called, but it's some kind of Japanese plum wine, basically. It's the kind of barrels it's aged in. And this thing is, I guess this is three. We've all seen eight. It's kind of really close. Oh, it's yeah, it's eight years old, made in California. One of the few distilleries in California that I would actually recommend doing stuff from. Actually, makes really good whiskey. They also make a good gin, <coughs> but I, I think this is a really unique expression called baller. And this is actually pretty hard to get. Um, hey, they use synthetic. Thank you. I appreciate that. So. This is a very unique expression. So they kind of tried to do a Japanese style on this whiskey. Oh, um, it's it is very very unique. This is a single malt, probably the, one of the most use, unique single malts I've ever tried. Unique's one word for it. Nail polish remover is another. <sighs> See, you don't like that. See, I like it. See, I just get all that plum wine on it. It's so nice. It's really. And then nail polish remover. See, I don't get that. I get all the nice fruits on there. See, I love this. I think this is a unique, unique whiskey. Mm. Oh, it's good. It, 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 is, it is funky. It is a funky adventure for sure. 
Um, I can't name any other whiskey that remotely tastes like this. Um, I can't name any other whiskeys that remotely smell right. like this either. So right, it's clear. I haven't gotten to taste yet. All right. So Eric says, this is St. George depicted as a samurai warrior on the label. The artist was a local from Oakland near Almeida. The distillery is an aircraft hangar on the formal naval on the former naval air station. Ah, oh, interesting. Alameda Naval Station. That would make sense. Is a hint of smoke from the charred barley. Definitely would say that for sure. I I I enjoy this as the funky adventure that it is. Yes, yeah, Stellar Matrix. I really want to try that Rock Town really bad. Hmm. Oh, this is such a funk, but it's it's a good funk, and you can't go wrong. Like you said, calling it baller, and that is a good point. That's a Japanese samurai in the form of Saint George. And I don't know how you guys know the Saint George is. So obviously, he's a Catholic saint. Um, but usually, he's depicted obviously with the cross, with the shield here, with the uh, red and white cross. But you usually see him depicted with a dragon. So, which is, which you'll see the dragon here, obviously on the bottom. Like this is the Japanese style. Uh, it's very cool. That was my grandfather's last, oh, his last duty station as a lieutenant commander Chester Wake. Very, very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know if Eric, yeah, no, obviously, yeah, also, uh, Eric was a Marine, so we also thank him for his service, obviously. But my dad's a 28 year Air Force veteran, so I spent, I spent lots of time on bases and lots of times at class sixes. Class six is a great place to go to shop for whiskey if you have access to a base. Oh, I really do like this. So you, is this drawn on you or not? Not yet. I just, just really don't like this. Not for you. When it first hit my palate, um, the flavor kind of changed a little bit as it was on my palate. But the first reaction I got was, what the hell this, is this is probably what nail polish remover tastes like too. <laughs> Um, it changed pretty quickly from there um, and kind of developed and there were some more sweet notes that kind of came through at that point. Uh, but my first reaction was you. Yeah. And I would say it was probably was my first reaction too, but then I was like, okay, I'm going I'm to hang with this. And I hang on for a while. I was like, I kind of really like this whiskey. I kind of dig this. Yeah, yes. I, it's a I weird really adventure. With you, Eric. Eric was asking if I typically like smoky whiskeys. Yes, I am a peat head through and through. Octomore 8.3 is the yummiest stuff on the planet to me. Yeah, so. sweet tea, I-95, absolutely. I know you're down at, a, I think you said Fort Hood, yeah, which is a fantastic base down here in Texas. Mm -hmm. yes, I agree. The Class 6 has got one of the greatest freaking adventures there is. I mean, especially come Christmas time. I think some of the best freaking whiskeys and they're dirt cheap. And like he says, you can get custom orders of crap and they don't care. There's no allocation. It's just like, you can go to Class 6 and get a case of Eagle Rare, $21 with a case discount. They don't care. They're like, you can order pretty much whatever you want. I love the Class 6. It's fantastic. Mm. I really like this whiskey. I, I, I'm going to save this one for Sarah and tell her she's going to love it. She might. You never know. She certainly might. She, she, she certainly might. All right. So, all right. So, let's move on now to McCarthy's. All right. So, this is a three year peated, bar, peated barley from Scotland. This I think you're going to love. It's aged in Oregon oak. Ooh, is this tasty? That sounds like real pork. Probably wishing that. Ooh, sweet tea. That sounds awesome. Mm. Ooh, we should do a. Uh, we should do that. Ooh. When we get our plate. Yeah, and that smell great. This one smells right, So good. let's do a little more thing about this. Okay, so this is McCarthy's out of Oregon. This is the uh, Clear Creek Distillery. This is actually their some of has been around for holy crap, almost yeah, thirty years now. These guys have been making skulls since 1985. I mean, this is when wow. nobody gave a crap about peat in this country. We gave a crap about single malts. I mean, this was in the freaking bourbon, you know, bus, hey, hey. bus. I mean, nobody gave a crap about it. But yeah, they said, nope, we're doing it. So um, their owner decided we're going to make a really good whiskey to make it taste like scotch. So this is a, so it says three years, peated barley, 100%. 
heated, 85 proof. This was one of my, hey, I grabbed it. I didn't know what I was going to get. Said PD on it. I'd see if I like it or not. Oh, it smells so good. I'm not smelling peat on this. Did I get in the peat on that? I get it all day long. That's good. Nice it's good. Right. Oh, yeah. We work in the morning, Eric, but we're professionals. It's all good. <laughs> I'm not. I'm going to pull some other whiskeys out to be real honest with you. Mm. I'm just going to pour more of what he gave me. Oh. Oh, I love that. Okay. That taste. How smoky and peaty is that? So freaking good. Thanks, sweet tea. Thanks for coming mm. in. Have a good night. Oh, isn't that good? Oh, yeah. Oh, isn't that, that is. Oh, cool. wow. The smoke yeah. really that shows up on the palate. This is delicious. Yeah, this was a, not on the shelf a goody goody probably a couple years ago. And I was like, oh, that sounds good. I'll try it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. You said this is a three year old? Isn't that amazing? So they used Oregon oak, which has to be Garyana because that's what it is. Yeah. So, oh, it's so freaking good. Oh, yeah, see, Will and Double R, he tried it. He tried, it was the first one he tried. That's right, because he's up from the Pacific Northwest, so that makes sense. What peat are they using? It says Scottish peat. I don't know. Um, I'll write to them and ask. Maybe they'll tell us. So Jason Boosie wants to know, have you tried Smoke the Sea by Ophidian? I have not tried that, Jason, but certainly want to try. Oh, okay, Will, he, does, he does say that is Garyana. That they use in the McCarthy's. Perfect. So speaking of Gariana, uh, Westland has a Gariana series that is phenomenal whiskey. You guys get a chance. They make very limited runs over. You get a chance to buy a Gariana, but they're about 150 bucks a bottle. Buy it on site. It is some of the best whiskey I've ever had, for sure. Yeah, this I love this whiskey. This is this is one of my absolute favorites. Hmm. I hide this whiskey for myself. It's, I can understand why. Smoke and see in a bourbon finish with Isla casks. Ooh, sounds good. That sounds awesome. Yes, Jason, bring that. That sounds tasty. Matt, what's the MSRP on this one? 50 bucks. Okay. And completely worth it. Mm, it's good. It's only at 42.5%. It tastes a little bit richer than that, but it does taste good. Higher, yeah. So it tastes like, but they definitely know what they're doing. Like I said, they've been doing this for 30 years, so. Yeah, I actually like this better than the Westland peated. Mm -hmm. It's more peated. It, it's heavier peat for sure. It's got to definitely have a higher PPM on it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't ask Westland what the PPM was on theirs, but uh, I'll send him a note and ask him. I thought he said somewhere around 30%, but I mm. might be making that number up. I you know, thought he might he be right about that, though. But I don't know. I'll ask. Mm. Classic cut. Let's be talking about the Mac. Oh, yeah. That classic cut, Donald, from McAllen is fantastic. Mm. I have some good freaking whiskey. That was my absolute favorite of the McAllen tasting we did, Matt. Absolutely. Yeah, we tasted... I think we tasted all of the different colored releases, the numbered releases that they've done recently. We tasted McAllen's 12 through 25, possibly even a little bit older than that. And then we also tasted um, that classic cut. And that classic cut was hands down my favorite uh, McAllen of the night. Excellent. So Todd contacted Eric today. Yeah, absolutely some of them. They're great guys and uh, make really good whiskey for sure, Eric. Glad they contacted you. Yeah, that's that one I brought you at Iron Root when we were back out there in April. They're doing fun things. Oh, you're doing fun. And what, what I gave you guys was a batch one, which is 14 months. The newer stuff, it's 18 months and older now. Oh, my gosh. 
It's a whole lot better. So good. Yeah, well, I think then, enjoy doing stuff with them for sure. When you actually go to the distillery and you can actually taste some things straight from the barrel, oh. um, man, the funk goes almost completely away because uh, some of the stuff has a little bit of that raw funk on it too. Mm -hmm. Still, I mean, we're talking 18 months old, so uh, it doesn't have that in barrel for a length of time kind of taste to it. It tastes like a young, like a young bourbon. Uh, but some of their stuff that's coming out of cask strength, even being so young, tastes ridiculously good. It does, yeah. So, you know, um, Justin gave me some of that rye malt they had. And it's been sitting in that bottle. So we had some the other night after you guys left with uh, Brian and some of the other guys. Oh, my gosh. It's even better than it was when we put it in that bottle. Our oxidation in there, holy crap, is it good. Yeah. Mm. You talking about that small little one of uh, the cast strength rye that we yep. had? Uh huh. Exactly. Mm. You know? Yeah. Again, with uh, surprising that I actually liked the rye. See, you're coming around. It's all good. No, I'm finding one offs. There you go. Well, I'm gonna grab some cocaine and some Del Bach, I think, because I'm having a good time, and why not? That's fair. All right, you keep the people entertained for a minute. But uh, but uh, but uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. That'd be that'd be bad. Well, he's going to get that. I am gonna pour myself uh some more balconis, and I'm gonna go with that rum finished, sixty three point five percent. Sounds like a delicious little treat. Trevor's over here talking about a peated bourbon. Rock oh, town? Right. Peated bourbon. That sounds so good. Which is it the rock town he's talking about that we hear so much about? I don't know. I didn't look that in the chats. Trevor, which one we which uh peated which, which peated bourbon are we talking about here? I move some of my freaking whiskey here. Because you know, why not? The rock town, yep. Yeah, I, that's what everybody told me. How good that is. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, it's just funny. Being in Texas, we don't get Rock Town, which I don't know why. I mean, Arkansas is next door. Yeah, you think? You think we get it? Maybe they just don't make it. That could just—they simply don't make enough, which is certainly possible. I don't know if Mark Goins is selling here or not. I wonder if they get it in Louisiana. I do wonder. Okay, so in our barbecue episode. We did okay again. We did two different ones. We did the regular one, which is this orange one here, which is uh, also uh, 92. Yep, 92. And this is their single malt, 100% malted barley. And then this is their red one here, is also what says finished in apple brandy casks. And these are both, I think, a couple years old, from what I remember. So let's do the regular one first. Really, really enjoy this whiskey. All right. This. Okay. Not acceptable. Stop using cork. All right. So, oh, it smells so good. I do love it. So, anyway, so Colcagan is in New Mexico and they are at 7,000 feet above sea level and they use uh, temperature control warehouses. All right. Thanks, Solar Matrix. That's awesome. I'm excited. Oh. Yeah, what I really want to try is the cast strength um, of this cocaine. I have, that's the one I have not tried for sure, but I would love to try it. I'm with you on that, Matt. Oh, smells so good. So this is mesquite smoked. Um, yeah, so it gets a lot of nice flavors on it. So it's a, I would say it's a clean uh, single malt for sure, but woody. In a good way. Oh, those are tasty. Yeah, I brought both of these with me actually last year to the Bastards. Well, the time I guess the opening the kind of barrel at La Quinta. 
And we, I think, I pretty much don't touch them real often because getting these again. For the same thing, they don't distribute to uh, Texas except for one bar in El Paso gets it. It's like sounds Irish like Kilbagan. Except for except for Cole Kagan is way better than Kilbagan. Not that Kilbagan's bad. It's just not that great. This is significantly better. So I want to actually compare. Um, so the apple brandy finish is probably one of the most complex books I've ever had, to be real honest with you. But yeah, so they actually sell the apple brandy them as well at the distillery and make this beautiful whiskey with it. This whiskey, you could easily spend an hour with and find new things the entire hour. Yeah, it changes constantly. Constantly changes. So this has all your sweet notes on the apple brandy finish, more smoke, more fruits, like a darker, heavier woods, a little bit of uh, baking spices for sure. Mm. Oh, it's such a great whiskey. I really, really love that whiskey. Um, no, I do not nitrogen my bottles. But they do taste really good. I've thought about nitrogen some of mine. Uh, I have moved some of my remnants of my special bottles Just into tiny bottles. Wild, yeah. I'll do that occasionally, but no. Um, I, I'm sure probably most of you guys know that uh, one of my friends, you know, Liquor Hounds, one of my friends, he actually uses uh, argon and he, to, to do his. And he, you know, buys tanks. And that's how he gasses his. So a lot of it, what I learned from him is when you gas a whiskey, you have to be really careful how long it stays open before you gas it. Because if you do it too early, you will get you won't get the changes you want. Or some of it needs to be oxidized once you gas it, let it be ungassed for six months before you drink it. So you're, it's, a, it's a fine line with the, when you start gassing whiskeys. Interesting. Yeah, so like I said, and of course that guy's a freaking genius with whiskey. So we like, use argon for for wine at work. Uh, okay. I have a machine that essentially exchanges argon gas for for liquid, mm -hmm. so I can keep the bottle sealed and still pump wine out of it. Uh, but wine and whiskey are two very very different beasts. Absolutely, so. for sure. Yeah, and I'd probably agree. DJ, moving small bottles is probably better. But sometimes, with a lot of air in there, magic happens. So, it's a crapshoot. There's there's not a lot you can say about it. Ooh. For real, though, what a statement. Just just put it on up. Yeah, we got to put that. I mean, I just poured some Port Charlotte 10, having some smoked bison jerky. It's awesome. Port Charlotte 10 might be one of my favorite scotches. Yeah, cheers to you, Donald, because that is a true statement. Absolutely. I don't know if, how much you guys know about Port Charlotte. So that's a Brew Claudie product. Port Charlotte 10 is a beautiful, beautiful whiskey, heavily peated. And the fact that Donald Rents is drinking it just it, it just makes me happy. I love so actually, so funny funny story too is Brew Claudie is actually the sister distillery to Westland. Yep. That like okay, so one of the cool things about Brew Claudie is not only are they, are they completely transparent in what they do, they will tell you on a bottle every freaking farm the damn barley came from. I mean, which is awesome. You can go in into their website and track um, from the bottle. You scan the bottle in their QRC code. It'll tell you all the farms, tell you all the different things in it. It's really cool. But it's on the it's on the uh, canisters too. But then it'll get even more detail about that farm specifically if you do that, which is really neat and. Like completely transparent, which is awesome. I love Brew Claudie. That's definitely one of the best scotches ever. So speaking of that, so in September, actually, Erica from Brew Claudie is, yeah, you don't even know about this. Yet. Well, I'm going to be on the Mash and Drum with Erica. Obviously, you're welcome, Will. Um, we'll uh, be talking to Erica, who's been here back in last October. We did an event with Blessland and Brew Claudie, which was amazing. Yeah, the manager was talking about Brew Claudie, so that's going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah, she's probably my app. She may be my favorite ambassador ever, to be real honest with you. She's 
quite awesome. Mm. Yeah, she's gonna be. Yeah. Cole Kagan. Yeah, if you guys can get Cole Kagan, do it. Is it a wine or something? Oh wow, Eric, that's that's crazy, man. He can re so Eric promising to reviving his wine channel, going back and forth, that. advantages, advantages both. Wow. All right, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure most of you know this point. Eric is probably the smartest man on YouTube. I've come to that conclusion by far. I mean, if I've had the thankfully the lucky opportunity to spend time with Eric in person, that is seriously one of the smartest, most intelligent men I've ever spent time around. To listen to his, and he knows about everything. It, it's not just wine and whiskey; it's theology, whatever you want to talk about. Eric knows about it, and it's in, in depth, thoroughly studied. It's amazing. So, uh, certainly the most intellectual among the YouTube whiskey channels, for sure. And the sexiest, apparently. Hey, nothing sexier than seeing Eric wait with no shirt on during one of the whiskey dicks uh, live streams, for sure. There's nothing you come back to what is going on. There's Eric with no shirt on. Because, you know, why not? <laughs> I still think the absolute best part of that is the fact that the camera never once switched to him because he never said a word. It he was, walked quietly, yeah. sat down on his bench, uh, drank a couple of drinks from his dram, and then got back up and walked away and put his shirt back on, never saying a word. So the camera never actually switched to him. It was he all just saw him down in the corner. <laughs> and we couldn't stop laughing about it. It was funny. It's almost as good as uh, Bill moving his bar around. <laughs> that will still go drown as maybe the greatest whiskey YouTube streams of all time. Indeed, indeed. 20 years from now, we're still going to be talking about that stream. We're going to create something really epic for, uh, I think, uh, at La Quinta, I think. We're going to make something epic this year. I'm a little concerned about La Quinta, to be real honest. Yeah, me too. It, it may be uh, a shit show. Maybe, maybe not only just taking over the whole hotel, the parking lot, the street in front of it, you know, God only knows at this point. Yeah, it's going to be bad. But great. Great, yeah. Not bad. The good news is it's a bunch of magnificent bastards, which thankfully means controlled crazy whiskey people, but in a controlled environment. Not that it won't be drunk, because I guarantee it'll be quite a bit of drunkenness. It's just part of the territory. Indeed. But we left everything cleaner than it was when we left. But for what matter? All right. Was, yeah. Well, I unfortunately am going to have to call this at 11 o'clock. Uh, I got a kid in the other room yelling for me. So uh, I'm going to have to sign off here in a minute anyway. So. You, you're bringing handcuffs. All right, Eric. That sounds lovely. Oh, God, I'm not coming to La Quinta anymore. I I don't know what's going on there. Um, I'm going to just... Yeah, whoever's room with Eric, um, sorry. That's uh -huh. a personal problem. And no pants. Cheers, Eric. Thanks for coming in, bud. Really appreciate it. You know what, man? I'm all for the no pants party. Yeah, I totally like not wearing pants. If I wasn't on a stream, I wouldn't be wearing pants either. I hate wearing pants. Pants are the worst. All right. Now, pajama pants, I'm cool with. You know, shorts are good, but pants, this is hot. I just don't like to wear pants. Especially in Texas in the summer, it's the worst. I hear that. Okay, so now we're pouring Del Bach. And if Eric, we'll ask to leave, that's fine. I'll probably, I'll stay on probably for a little bit longer with, with everybody tonight. That's fair then. Because I'm by myself. Well, I'm by myself. My kids and my wife are here, but they're asleep and I don't give a crap. I don't have a good time. So, anyway. Cheers, everybody. Have a good evening. Cheers, Will. See ya. All right. So, just to me. All right, which is cool. Anyway, so thanks for everybody hanging out with me tonight. I really appreciate this. Having a great time. Hopefully, everybody's having a good time still. So, I got nowhere to go. So, I'm going to hang out with you guys for a little bit longer. Because I like whiskey. I like hanging out with you guys. It's fun. So, anyway, so this is the uh, Whiskey Doll Bach, which is from Arizona. Which is, of course, a grain to glass um, distillery. And they're very cool. So, it means, so Del Bach, an ancient term meaning from the place where the river re reappears in the sand. I think most of you, that, I, mean, I assume most of you are pretty much Americans, but the ones of you that aren't Americans, um, Arizona is a very desert place. So, it's just interesting they're even aging stuff out there, which is really kind of cool. So, it's 
not really like Texas because it's so much drier than Texas is, whereas Texas has uh, got some humidity to it. Arizona is very dry. Hot, but dry. So anyway, so you've got the Dorado, which is the uh, mesquite smoked, and the classic, which is not, which is unsmoked. So I think they're both really uh, tasty whiskeys for sure. So they both got a little bit of the funk to it because, I mean, you know, they're younger. Um, but they're both really delicious whiskeys. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, it's good. So have, have anybody in the chat here had the uh, Del Bach before? Okay, so William says he's tried the uh, Dorado. Excellent choice. Mm. All right, so the regular uh, classic Dubok is much sweeter than the uh, peated, well, peated, smoked Dorado, which I really like. Mm. Those are great whiskeys. So, <coughs> yeah, Donald, unfortunately, I wish we could get some stuff out to you guys. See, Trevor, come with Scotch drinker. I like that. See, I like to be an all around drinker in general of all whiskey. You should love all the whiskeys. So that's a whiskey sport, and it's good for that. I'm not really sure where Lake Havasu is. I'm not real sure. But William, I'll, I'll take your word. I don't know. Boy, where is Lake Havasu? I'm not sure what state that's in. Don't know a single thing about it. Oh, Canadian club only? Oh, we'll get... Oh, it's in Arizona. Okay, good reason then. Okay. Yeah, Killer Jolt. Um, yeah. No Canadian club. No, it's just bad. Bad things happen when you drink lots of Canadian club. Ask Chris. He knows. Canadian club will hurt you. No, 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 no. Yeah. Anyway, so what do you really, really want to know? And I'm, I really am hoping it's not Canadian Club. Mm. Has anybody else in the chat had the uh, Del Bac at all? Oh, yes. Yeah, so Don, okay. Yeah, so Donald, I... Obviously, I'll email you about that. So, I'm assuming we're having an issue. Um, oh, God, Trouble, you drank the damn. Oh, oh my gosh. You drank the freaking Canadian Club with him? Why? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Hey, Jason, thanks for coming in, bud. Cheers. Have a good night. I'm trying to keep track of the high proof bourbon. Yeah, hey, Stellar Matrix, it's all good to go back to high proof bourbon. No problem with that. Well, DJ11, no, I'm not the biggest fan of Canadian whiskey. Yeah, Dylan, I'm still going because why not? Like I said, they're asleep here. I got nothing better to do. Why not? Uh, let's see. So, William wants to know which would you prefer, the Dub Bach or Pill Gate? I think of the four, I'd probably go with the. Uh, Apple brandy finish, Cole Kagan. Uh, I really, really like that. I like all of them. I'm not going to say anything's wrong with any of them. But they're really good. Another friend can, if not Matt, can try. Or another friend who's going. Hey, howdy, whiskey. Thanks for coming in, bud. You then tell what you like. I want you some of the whiskeys. Yes. Yeah, and I agree with you. Uh, howdy, whiskey is... Try everything you can, so much you like and don't like. And I think that's completely a good idea. That's what I've done. For sure. Ooh, brisket or burnt ends? Burnt ends. Okay, at least the ones Brian made, for sure, Dylan. I mean, those things were like magical candied meat, for sure. They were really, really good. I love them. <coughs> That's for sure. So, all right. I like all these whiskeys. We should do 
Let's see. Okay, so I'm a total amateur in scotch. You have single malt, right? Well, what do they call the one that will multiple grains? But okay, yes. All right. So Trevor Wilson here. I'm gonna actually highlight this real quick. All right. So Trevor Wilson is asking a good question. So, so he is a total amateur in scotch. So he's a single malt, right? Yes, these are all single malts. These are all American single malts. So, so these happen to all be 100% barley. Doesn't necessarily be the, the American requirement is only 51%. Now, excuse me. In Scotland, it is has to be 100% blood. So blended, like you ask, is what are the colons that are multiple grains? Is blended, correct? So blended means it's a, it is barley and other grains, which is generally going to be corn. It could be wheat. Mostly it's going to be corn. So it's one of those things about it. Um but yeah, that's what it is. So blend now, if you had a blended malt, which would be only single malts combined, that's a blended malt. Or you have blended grain, which is only grain whiskeys. So it's just kind of that family of scotches. Oh. So Andy Man wants to know, did I get a pick like Joss G did? Well, speaking of that, I happen to have something in front of me. This happens to actually be, now obviously not a single malt, Irish Harbinger, which is their bourbon. This actually is is Josh Galladay's from Cash Strain. Well, formerly Cash Strain down Texas with Texas Whiskey Life's um, actual pick, and it was brought here by a wonderful gentleman from Arkansas the other day. He drove to a wonderful place called Parrish, Texas, which is basically in the middle of freaking nowhere, and he uh, picked this up for me, which I really appreciate that. So uh, there's three other bottles. And we might have discussion about those other bottles, but that's for a different day. So anyway, so yes, this is a bottle of one of an evolution barrel from Iron Root, which basically means they drain one third of the barrel at one time, and then they bring it out. Oh yes, <sighs> yeah, I'd agree with you. You you do wish they had Iron Root out there in uh, Illinois. I'm surprised you guys don't have Total Wine in Illinois. Uh, how do you whiskey? I, I assume, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm going to totally combo these whiskeys. When we're done tonight, I'm going to probably pour them an infinity bottle. But So since we're going to speak of this, let's let's have a little bit of this together while we're at it. It's some, uh, why not? Oh, yeah, Binnies. Okay, so no total wine. I don't think Iron Root is obviously in Binnies. Um, I'll talk to Robert and ask him about it just to, to see if that's a possibility. I have no idea if it is or not. Um can't hurt to ask for sure. So, we're on stream, go away. So, anyway, so, um, yeah, this is their pick. So, if I remember, it's Yellow Dent 2, Bloody Butcher, I think Purple Corn, for what I remember what Josh told me. But, yeah, so anyway, this is an evolution barrel. And the evolution barrel is where they take one third at a time and then they dump a third and then so many months later, dump another third and then they're so much later to dump the rest of the other third. So that's what an evolution barrel is. But yeah, it's tasty stuff for sure. So let, let's see what we got here. Obviously you can get corn, um, some heavy caramel, some oak, very candied and sweet. Yeah, it's got a really nice nose on it, though. I mean, and it is 61.38. So, you know, it is definitely a high, high alcohol content for sure. So they do a semi truck instead of the borders in tequila. Oh, well, that's a shame being stuck with tequila and iron. You definitely get the iron over the tequila for sure any day. Yeah. Well, okay, so how do you whiskey? So my question for you is, do you guys get no Texas whiskey whatsoever? Oh, you or, uh, oh, you have a bunch of Balcones. Okay, so Balcones, which is very, very good. No complaints on that for sure. I love Balcones. Mm, good stuff. For sure. Mm. Oh. Oh, that's good. Okay. So it's really sweet, but really high proof. So it is candy, but also has your like um, like worn leather. Uh, oh, really appley. 
um, like more like stewed apple, like a caramel stewed apple. Um, oh, that's good. That's really good. Yeah, I'll have to probably spend about an hour with this to give you guys like full tasting notes on it, which I totally will do. This is really good. So uh, cheers to Josh for picking this out. This is fantastic whiskey for sure. Really enjoying this. Mm. So Trevor, in Arkansas, which bell do you guys get? Just to wonder. Oh, loving this. This is oh, this is good. This is really good. Yeah, the other things you guys want to have broken in front of us, sir. Is there a demigod amongst us? I'm assuming there must be for saying hello. Hey, Brad, what's up? Good timing, bud. Yes, for some bloody butcher corn. Absolutely. Thanks for coming in, Brad. Appreciate it. Yes, you probably know actually a little more, but I mean, hell. I, hey, Brad, did you actually taste this pick? Um, Ex demigod, whatever. We still call you the demigod. Um, did you help uh, pick this pick yourself as well? Did Robert send you guys samples and stuff for this one, Brad? Baby blue with the green label, which is the rye, and the cinnamon, which is the black label. Yeah, those are all, and all those are good, Trevor. Have you tried all of them, Trevor? Because I like every single one of those balconas for sure. Those are all really, really good. But yeah, so anyway, so Brad is, uh, you know, on the Cash Strength channel. Check them out for sure if you guys haven't. Great guys up there in Canada. I didn't pick it, but I tasted it. Yo, it is delicious. Absolutely, Brad. It's fantastic. Yeah, Josh did a hell of a pick. That's for damn sure. He, this is this is damn good stuff. Like I said, and I don't know how much you guys know about different corn. So I think most of you are pretty familiar with Iron Root. Iron Root does all sorts of crazy corn varietals, and they're all awesome. Yeah, look at Monster Cookies with a high-proof iron. Yep, I would agree, Brad. That's exactly correct. Yeah, so Brad's saying it is uh, liquid molasses cookies with high-proof iron root kick. Yum. Yeah, absolutely. It is damn good. All right. Hey, Eric. How's it going, bud? Thanks for popping in to say hi because I know usually you're working. So thanks for coming in. But, yeah, so we're having a good time uh, drinking all this stuff. Yeah, it's been uh, – Mostly cast, not cast, single malt American whiskey tonight. Yes, rise are very different, Donald. I would totally agree on that for sure. Um, yeah, pick the bow blues in the foolproof arson. Yeah, so you should, and uh, Trevor, so the baby blue is really nice. It's a blue corn uh, whiskey. It's 92 proof. Uh, yes, it's very sweet. If you like a sweet whiskey, you'll love it. It's a. Uh, Candy corn, I mean, it's probably one of the best descriptions of it. It is, but it, I really, really like it. Um, if you can get the True Blue 100, I'm not sure if that's available to you or not. If you can get that, that's a little bit better. And then, um, this is probably Texas only, but the uh, True Blue Cast Strength. And they're in Arkansas. I don't know where in Arkansas, but uh, if you can get down to Texas and get some of those, I mean, I would totally do that and pick those up for sure if I was you. Um, so those are really good ones. Yeah, we're gonna have you hope you're yes, and uh, Eric, we will be reviewing the 12 year that one for sure, absolutely. Yeah, kettle corn that's another good one, Heidi Whiskey, absolutely kettle corn for sure. Yes, we will get Eric, we will definitely be getting that review in on the Kamara for sure. Um, that is definitely good stuff. Uh, let's see here. So, while I'm yeah, absolutely, buddy, yeah, I've, I've got a bolt actually up on the, on the counter here, so. They're both up there on top of my uh, – let me turn this real quick. So you can see up there both of the ones you're asking for right up there. So anyway, so let's switch over to – now I know we actually have the review coming out in a couple weeks. This is a uh, pick by Travis Waller. He helped them uh, – he sent this as a donation, this uh, Cedar Ridge single malt, single cask, chocolate cherry wood, which is a fantastic whiskey from Iowa. I know we've talked about it before, but this is quite tasty for sure. Good stuff. Is there a definitive American single malt? Is an introduction to American single malt? Yeah, so Donald wants to know. Let me click this actually. 
is there a difference in of American single malt and an introduction to American single malt? I'd say yes. I would say if you're going to pick some American single malts, if you can get them, Balconis and West, Westland. Those two, I would say, are very different because one, the Westland's three to five years old, and the Balconis is about 14 months old, but those would be the definitive ones for sure. I would get into those. So that would be the ones I'd pick. Mm-hmm. All right. So this uh, Cedar Ridge chocolate cherry wood, you know, it's got a little of your oak. Definitely got the cherry and the chocolate. I mean, surprise. But it's really sweet. And it has very cokey, uh, cacao on it. Uh, very little young wood. A little bit of leather. It just smells delightful. Yeah, Eric. Um, I would say finding Eagle Rare, unfortunately, is getting very, very difficult. As you know, a few years ago, I mean, Eagle Rare is on the shelf. No big deal. And if you can pay, you know, $30, $35 max, I wouldn't pay much more than that um, for sure. Really? Matt says that hey, you are in stock at every store. Damn. Well, that's nice. Finding under, no, finding under 40 a bit. Yeah, because I can get use you can get Eagle Rare here for about 30, which you know, is not bad. Um, not real often, but eh, maybe once every month or so. Yeah, without markup. And Matt's right, without markup. With markup, I've seen some place I unfortunately I've seen some source here. Had it for sixty, which it's not worth sixty bucks. It's good, but it's not sixty. I mean, like I said, thirty, thirty-five is about what I would pay for it. Mm. Yeah, so it's funny, you know. So speaking of like, you know, BT products, uh, we can get um, Weller Special Reserve, pretty much whatever the hell you want here. Or is it hurt other states? Forget it. 28, okay, 28 will work, that's for sure. Matt says, not ABC, but close enough. Almost everywhere in Wisconsin, says Ice House. 50 cents a year, and they come in, they're in the thousands. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. What? Man, for what? Andy, they had, they had it for $119? Holy crap. Yeah, no. Oh, so, so no Weller in Michigan, though. Interesting. As Matt knows, like I said, he's working goody goody here. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, you can get Weller for 20 bucks. Hmm. Interesting. What? A hundred dollars? No, no, no. The answer is no for GTS for thirteen hundred. Absolutely not. No, it's hundred and hundred and thirty bucks max for GTS. No, that's insanity. Yeah, absolutely not going to happen. No, no, no. Please don't do this to yourselves. That's terrifying concept for sure. I'm sorry. Really? It's crazy distribution of that crap. Because you can get... It's funny. I'm, I'm on the stream. Sorry, guys. I thought I was unmuted. Is everybody good now? Sorry about that. My kiddo wanted to quit, had a question. Oh, no, you can't move. Ow. 
No, you can't, you can't be on here. No, you're underage. Go. Sorry. Little person has questions. She, she has to go. Sorry about that. Anyway, so. Okay. Anyway, my lovely child. Where were we at? Oh, talking about the the, the uh, Buffalo Trace and stuff. So, anyway. Oh, I'm glad nobody went to death. Of course he blamed the kid, Brad. What else are you going to blame? So, yeah, so it's funny. So, the stores here, like, Buffalo Trace comes in, just, you know, they put it on the shelf for the most part, most places. Because, you know, it's $20, $25, depending where you're at. Um, the sleep is strong. Yeah. Andy knows about my daughter, who doesn't sleep and likes to just walk around the damn house. It's great. Mm. We will say this uh, Cedar Ridge, some malts are very good, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, Eric, what are you asking about? You asked we reviewed something? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a time very small. Oh, sure. oh yeah, we did. Oh yeah, so Eric, yeah, she asking the strength. Yeah, we did. We did talk about it earlier tonight. No, that's good stuff. Hey, thanks for coming, Dylan. Appreciate it. Let's talk to you later, bud. To get here, they keep pushing it back. Uh see, Buffalo Trace comes to this area probably once a month or so. You can get it. It's not bad. Prices okay. Most stores won't, don't mark up. Don't, don't eat my bacon. Damn it. All right, so my kid just stole my bacon. So naughty children do. But, you know, whatever. Mm. Yeah, you have to, Eric. Yeah. But yeah, we did a whole thing on uh, on the uh, short hands. Good stuff, though. For sure. Yeah, you're right, Matt. Curses. Yeah, I will know. She just stole a whole freaking piece of bacon. Ooh, 45. Oh, it's Canadian, though. Eh, it's probably about right. Yeah, right. Kids are sneaky. It's right, Stellar Matrix. Well, Brad, she wasn't up here, like, you know, when I put it out two hours ago. Thanks for coming in, Eric. We'll talk to you later, bud. Um, so I'm a shorter piece of bacon, and I'm displeased. Because Will makes the best freaking bacon ever. Mm. Oh, it's, oh, yeah. So, speak, has anybody seen that foolproof yet? Because I have not seen that at all. I know uh, Jason, the Mash and Drum, he did a pick of it. I was so hoping when he gets his pick that hopefully he brings some down to Austin. I'm hoping come October, which should be fun. You're going to get your first Blanton's. All right, DJ Wonder. That's awesome. Hope you enjoy it and let us know what you think of it for sure. Um, you know, Blanton's is good. We'll do a uh, a mash to night as you know, blind review one night here for sure. I'll probably conduct a blind, put numbers on it, give it to William and Sarah, and let them see uh, what they think of it. So for when we do that, we'll probably do we'll probably do eight of them that night, which will be fun. Yeah, oh, absolutely, Trevor. I think that the ghost is going to be a ghost if it even shows up in the state. Oh, I think you're right. Well, foolproof, yeah. So, I mean, so the thing is, so it's it's seven points above the uh, the 107 Antique right now. So how's it going to – I mean, I obviously haven't had it yet, so I don't know how much better is it going to be. Maybe it's going to be fantastic. Maybe it's going to be barely negligible better or maybe no different than all. I, I just don't know. I don't know if the, I don't know if the age is different on, or if it's just simply the proof. I don't know. So we'll find out. Pretty interesting. So, already know what it's going to be. Any Buffalo Trace suggestions? Yeah, pretty much any Buffalo Trace products, DJ11, is going to be good for uh, anything. Um, even if you go to the Ancient Age series, which is like 20 bucks for a 175, uh, I don't think it'd be bad. Or even if you go to Benchmark, which is their four year plus, didn't make the cut uh, Buffalo Trace. Might be worth it. It's fifteen bucks for one seven five. I, I'd pick that up if I was you. If you just wanted to try some of the budget line Buffalo Trace, um, ancient ancient age. If you can, is good. The uh, Tensar. If you can find that, it's a little bit more. It's like 
twenty-two dollars for one seven five. I'd pick that up for sure. Um, any of the other ones, you're gonna be really hard to find, like Elmer T. Lee or uh, Rocco Farms. All I can say, unfortunately, is good luck. There's a chance you find it, they're probably nil. Uh, it's just one of those things. I was never source CYPB. Yeah. That, okay. So, how do you whiskey is asking? I th- I'm gonna highlight it. It's probably the best thing. Is I think there's a lot because every major change area getting a store pick. My knowledge, no one's ever had a store pick of CYPB. You know, you might be right. I don't think I've ever seen a, C- a store pick of CYPB, but it is good whiskey. But it's not worth more than fifty bucks. So I also am hoping that the new full or uh, well, our full proof. I'm hoping it's fifty bucks or less. I really hope it for less. I, I don't know um, what it's going to be, obviously. So we'll have to just see what it comes out at. We'll just see. Yeah, it's one of those things. Ooh, I, I, I am interested in that new E.H. Taylor, uh, Armarth, however you pronounce that, I'm I'm guessing. But uh, I did read about that one, Whiskey Wash. That does sound really interesting. How's it going to be? Who knows? We'll see. I, I think it should be good. Um Six months special reserve. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Yeah, uh, seller managers. If you need special reserve, you can get it when you come down to Texas in a couple of months. You can go to the nearest liquor store. They've got it's on the freaking shelf. It's no big deal. It's twenty bucks. I think a one seven five is twenty five to thirty, something like that. It's cheap. Thanks for coming in, William Devil R. We'll see you later, bud. Interesting for sure. I'm searching for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That that new EH Taylor, I'm I'm very interested in that for sure. I am not will not be disappointed in that. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. So in a couple months, I know a lot of you guys are gonna be here for the Bastards Ball, and I think that's gonna be I'm looking forward to meeting all you guys. I mean, that's for sure. I know put putting names to face with you guys is gonna be a lot of fun. They'll be down here for sure. It'll be a blast. Um Hopefully everybody can get a chance to come hang out at the Bachelor's Ball. At the very least, come out to the uh, Quinta that night. That should be a really good time. Oh, yes. I really hope. Not. So Donald Ranch is talking about the uh, Triconal 16-year Moscatel finish. Oh, that sounds so good. I really I really hope that shows up. Because all I ever had from uh, Triconal is the regular one, the 10-year, and then the uh, 16-year Madeira. Very good. Oh, Brad, you're right. It's definitely going to be crazy. In a good way. I think that's true. But I think it's going to be out of control. I mean, but in a good way. Not like nobody's going to be like doing like uh, keg stands or anything. I mean, it was obviously for whiskey. I mean, I'm really hoping nobody's down in a bottle because, I mean, that's going to end poorly. So let's hope they're not. And let's not do shots of fireball because I think that'll also end poorly. But, you know, hey, whatever. Whatever's for everyone. I mean, I'm sure that something bad will happen. Yeah, no body shots of uh, Johnny Walker. Yeah, you're damn right, Will. Now, Vito, on the other hand, I expect I have high expectations for Vito to just be hammered. I mean, I expect to meet him hammered because it's Vito, and who wasn't drunk would be disappointed. See, DJ one one. That's right, bud. Absolutely hope you can come down here in uh, October for the event. For sure. Canadian club later tonight. No, no, I will not. But we, kill Joe, you can down join it. Well, body shot. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we're going to leave the body shot to Vito and Sam. I'm pretty confident they can handle it on their own. Um, Yeah. I'll not be drinking any of those body shots because that's disgusting. But I'm pretty confident some other drunk fools will be. But that's a different story. And I'll let Vito explain that when that happens, you know, in a couple months. Because, yeah, yeah, that's good. It's, we're not getting into that because it's a terrifying thought, for sure. Anything that is uh, filtered through Vito's chest here is not something we should get. Yeah, exactly. No body shots. Ooh. Ooh, Donald, I, I would love to try those. That sounds amazing. Are these triconnels? Oh, so good. 16 year expert. 15 with you. Ooh, that sounds good. 
Plus, they can't make it. We need a live stream. Oh, yeah. So, speaking of that, so every channel that's down there in Austin, uh, I think most of it, yeah, we'll each have, I think, I think Daniel told us we'd have like about 30 minutes um, in the booth. So, maybe while we're talking to people, we can live stream it. I'm not real sure. I think it's going to depend if they can get the uh, Wi Fi out there to wherever the heck they have it sitting. Uh, I know last year it worked out and worked out pretty good. So we may do that's where I met a bunch of the uh, tubers that I don't know. So I'm hoping it does. Exactly. Yeah, because last year, because I was on, I guess, we had Roy's stream and on, on the Scotch Dummies. So we have Aquavite, Scotch Dummies, It's Bourbon Night, and Whiskey Day. So um, I think it's good. Yeah, and like Will said, we're hoping to stream for La Quinta as well. So I think it should be cool. It, at the very least, guys, we will film stuff for sure. Have as much, put as much content as we possibly can out from from uh, the Bachelor's Ball. Um, try to include you guys that can't make it as much as we possibly can. I'm hoping, obviously, as, as many as we possibly can. Are you wearing a Psalm necklace? Yes, we will. Because we'll actually be working, uh, not, so, not, of course, during the actual ball, but uh, we'll be doing some, we'll definitely wear on the Psalm necklaces for sure. Because uh, the day before, the, I, I don't know if they're sold out, if they sold openings, they're doing, uh, what do you call it? Tastings, basically. I think they're doing six pre, six, um, like predetermined ones by Daniel. Yeah. And, and Brad's right. These damn things weigh a freaking ton. He's right. We may wear them in the in the early part of the day and say, screw it, put it in our pocket. Because, all right, so I've got mine right here. Shit. I mean, this thing, for real, weighs a freaking ton. I don't know what the actual weight of this thing. I've never actually weighed it. I'm guessing um, maybe... Five to ten pounds. I mean, this thing weighs a freaking ton. Oh, yeah. For a picture, for sure. Yeah. I mean, this thing, seriously, this is like, you know, the freaking thing that, uh, you know, when David killed Goliath, he used this thing. Because, I mean, it's like that. It's, it's, it's insanity. This thing weighs a ton. But it's very cool, obviously. So, you know, and hell, Brad's got a chain and a freaking star on his. His weighs even more. I would imagine. I mean, so who knows? But yeah, I'm sure we'll have them because, like I said, the day before we'll be doing the class and we'll be working the class. So, but I'm sure during the ball, I'm sure we'll be wearing them too because, I mean, why not? We earned them. We might as well. <laughs> Brad, that's awesome. It depends how much you've been drinking, Brad. Then you won't care. <clears throat> then you won't care. So, you know, it's all good. But it'll be fun. Either way, it's all good times for sure. But, yeah, we'll have them with us. It'll be fun. Um, looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good time for everybody. I mean, it's going to be a lot of really awesome channels there. Um, can't can't say it's wrong. I also expect um, a lot of uh, shenanigans and just downright stupidity for most of us because that's what we're good at. So, you know, it is what it is. But it'll be a good time. We'll have fun. Um, and can't have anything wrong with it. Um well, yeah, so uh, if there's anything else you guys want to talk about as far as uh, American single malts, I mean, let me know. What, what, are the, what are the questions you have about it? Is there one you want to go back and we want me to talk about? It's hardly happening to do that. Or if we just want to keep on hanging out and chatting, I'm cool with that too, that whatever works for you guys. But, uh, yeah, this is fun. I, I really enjoy, obviously enjoy whiskey, enjoy chatting with everybody, having a good time. Um, so you can hit up whatever. So, uh, so this one here is... Let's see which one is this. This one. Okay. So this one is all three strain of hands combined. So it's got it's actually it's funny because it's got a little more fun than I expected that it kind of took over for the uh the uh diamond peak here, which is interesting. Thanks for coming in, Howdy Whiskey. I'll talk to you later. Mm-hmm. Mega strand of hand. Mm. 
not as good as I hoped. I think Down Peak is still better by itself. It unfortunately brings all those weird um, things up with it, the weird funk. Those are the super tall bottles coming from the U.S. Well, Kelly I think to tell you this is kind of close to a wine bottle. And my guess is these are cheap. And so they use them. It is what it is. Mm. Yeah, and Jason, I, I coach, I agree. There is no funk on the on the down P. But on the share in the regular in the regular yellow labels right hands, it's a funk. Fancier stuff. I never, and I never had, like I said, the uh, snowflake. I'd love to, but I haven't had it. Good stuff, though, for sure. I like it. But, to be honest, probably going to go back to some uh, Balcones because it's Balcones. Yeah, Jason, Mash and Drone, we're still going. Yeah, and like Will says, I never had that funk either before, but it, 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 it's totally there. It's, it's bizarre. Let's see. I click this. Star Snow. Have you had any Lord Lieutenant Kinahans? I just go all the 10 year and cast. I can't wait to, no, I haven't even heard of them, Donald. Um, more than happy to try them. Have never even heard of them. How do you feel about screw toss versus cork versus synthetic corks, Matt? Uh, I'm sure you know the answer to this, uh, Killer Joel. The answer is I hate corks because they're stupid. They break. They fall apart in your damn whiskey, and they're just cheap. Synthetics are better. Screw tops are the best because screw tops never screw you over, as long as it's as good hard plastic ones, not those crappy weller ones that are freaking tin junk. Um, always, always, always get a nice screw top because they're the best. Synthetic if you have to. Like Iron Root, they they believe in synthetic because Robert and Jonathan are freaking geniuses. See? Beautiful synthetic cork. This is the way it should all be. There should be no freaking corks. Yes, exactly. I agree, Brad. Corks are dumb. Synthetic corks just are better than are real cork. And well, yeah, exactly. I hate them. Well, just no real cork, and I'm happy. Exactly, Brad, because it's just terrible. They break. I mean, there's nothing. Wait, see, Del Bach uses some same thing. Here it is. Nice black synthetic cork. Beautiful. Can't go wrong. Can't break. Can't disintegrate in your damn whiskey. But then you get this stupid crap. Like Hulkagan uses, which don't get me wrong, love the whiskey. Look at this. Freaking sheared off. This, stop using this crap. We're in the 21st century. There's no excuse to use real cork anymore whatsoever. Yeah, I know it's history and it's nice, whatever, whatever. It's bullshit. Breaks. No, I agree, Jason. Uh, super long short words. I want to screw it up. But synthetic cork is nice and experience. And I agree. You can't get the cool popping noise we all love. I mean, you know. It does get a nice pop. So it's just synthetic that uh, St. George's uses. Love it. Love synthetics. Beautiful thing. Oh, no. A bottle of Middleton and a broken cork? Oh, that is terrible. I'm going to have to agree with you. That's, that's terrible. Yeah, there's nothing worse. So I will buy a lot of independent bottlers that are really generally fairly old whiskey. Uh, but generally, these, these bottles have been around for six, seven, ten years, sometimes on the shelf at a liquor store. And I'm sure as shit, those damn things, and they're always freaking cork. They shear off within seconds of opening. It never fails. Yeah, we've all had it. Exactly. Turn out to have a natural hole straight through the cork. Yeah, exactly, Jason. Damn right. Yeah, you try to get them wet, short, but like I said, the other night I had a freaking uh, signatory. 20-year uh, Glen Keith shear off on me. Happens. 
thankfully I was able to get it out without any cork dropping in, thank God. But I, I know that uh, down where at Psalm School, we had a Scots independent bottler of Little Mill 20 year from 1984. We had we ended up having to uh, filter it out. Freaking cork fell in the damn thing. And then we had to put it into mini vials. It sucked. It happens. Oh my gosh. Jason says he had a Buna Hobbins wall that leaked like a faucet if he turned it upside down. That's horrible. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the uh, this and of the uh, freaking real cork. I mean, it sounds cool, it looks cool, but in reality, it's a pain in the ass. It's just not any good. Let's see, what does Stranahan's use? Synthetic. Perfect. Now, I will say this. Unfortunately, Balcones does use real cork, which is a disappointment. And let me tell you, I've had a few of these damn things break. That's for damn sure. So, and everybody doesn't know this. Every time you guys empty a bottle, always, always, always save your corks. No synthetic, regular, whatever. Save them because I've used so many that I've had to reuse. Bye, Solar Matrix. Thanks for coming in. We'll see you later. I think, in fact, I'm gonna have a little bit of this. It's good stuff. Yeah, we'll be wrapping up here fairly soon because I know it's been a couple hours at this point. So. Good stuff, though. I understand the real course line, but those of us who buy hundreds of bottles are going to hit it. Yeah, I, and I agree, Jason. That, that's for sure. Yeah, right. It, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen enough that it's a problem. So, you know, we we get rid of it. So now I go back all the way back up here. Like, so anyway, so uh, so I got some questions for you guys in the audience here. So, what do you guys think of this? Uh, this, this stream yard. How is this working for everybody um, as far as seeing everything, hearing everything? How is the audio and video quality on here? What do you guys think of the dual screen? I know Google Hangouts should go back and forth. What did everybody think of the having the side by sides tonight? Just just see everybody's thoughts here. See if we should try to use a different service or if this works pretty good for everybody. So if you put, put your thoughts in there, stream would be great. Love that whiskey. Oh, Matt, you like this better. Okay, cool. Okay, so so so, so the video and audio quality is good for everybody. That's my major concern is putting on a good product for everyone. I, mean, I don't want to put out a crap product. I mean, I hope that everybody's entertained and enjoys this. I think... Um, okay, fine for you. Okay, good. Glad you guys are liking this. Okay. So I wasn't really sure. Um, <laughs> it will. That's funny. So the only, the only disappointment I have with it is the back and forth I like, but I like personally seeing the whole room for me. No, if you guys don't, I mean, and I guess that's the question for everybody too is, do you guys care if you see only half a room? I mean, does that matter to you guys? If we did have some cutouts. Oh, that was probably me yelling at my children. It's probably the cutouts. That was probably me purposely pushing mute. That I can pretty much guarantee you is me yelling at my kids. Unlike Will says, a lot of the screw tops are moving in the wine industry too, which is good. I agree completely on screw tops though. Yeah. I guarantee you the kill jolt. That was me screwing my kids was the cutouts because you know my kids don't sleep pretty sure most of you been around for all know that um because my kids if they had their way they'd be on these freaking streams but that's not going to happen because obviously we're talking about an adult product when they're 21 they're more than welcome on the stream until then no mm. so i'm going back to this uh about kind of rum finish which is really tasty yeah, we'll give this about 15 more minutes max, guys, and then we'll wrap this sucker up for sure. Because I got to go to bed, I got to work in the morning, and all that good fun stuff. But I've had a fantastic time hanging out. Well, I'm glad everybody's really uh, liking the yard stream. So I know 
So speaking of things, uh, so on Thursday night, um, I'm going to be over on the Scotch Test Dummies channel uh, with me and then Dusty Dan. He's Dusty Dan has sent me and Scott some blind samples. I don't know a clue what they are. I'll say they're blind. Um, we'll be testing them out. I think that's going to be fun. I, I'm ho I'm assuming it's going to be bourbon. I, I don't know that for sure. Obviously, it could be rye, maybe. Uh, more likely, probably bourbon. So I'm really excited to try some really old dusties. I think it'll be fun. Yes, yeah, see. Will opens up lots of bottles because he's a good little wine song. He's good. Good job. But yeah, I, I'd probably agree with since Will probably opens, I'm sure, like he says, a bazillion bottles, I'm sure, at night. Uh, compared to whiskeys, I mean, let's be honest, you open whiskey, but, you know, it's that time. Whereas a wine bottle, you try to open it up and finish it within, hopefully, that night as a restaurant for sure. Um, if it's in a day or two, max, I can't imagine any older. And Will obviously can know he's the wine song. I don't know this for sure. But I mean, I think that'd be your goal for sure as a restaurant. Ooh, okay. So, oh, Donald, that's excellent. So, Donald, I want to know you poured the last dram that you used from Jameson and Bow Street Cash. How is that? You know, I've seen that in the stores. I have not bought it because uh, I've heard that the new Jameson um, is not great as far as the wooden box glass, uh, clear glass. So how is that cash strength version compared to the old uh, green bottle? And I realize it's not cash strength. The old green bottle whiskeys, is that pretty good, comparable? How is that? I, I do really wonder on that one because I have not tried it yet. So. Oh, it smells so good. So here, like I said, we're wrapping up here soon. So, uh, so what's everybody drinking in the chat here to finish off for the night? Hmm. Speaking of Will, I've got to take care of that. Total amp and flavor. Okay. Okay. So, Donald, do you get the typical older, really nice, fruity? Um, sensations that you get on a really good old art Irish uh, pot still. Color do you like best? What color do I like for whiskey? Well, color is really kind of irrelevant. I mean, we'd all like whiskey to be nice and dark or whatever, but I think color really is subjective. I mean, you get stuff that's this color that is beautiful, fantastic whiskey. Then you also get stuff that's this color that's also a fantastic so you've got this almost you know amber you know color compared to this light color but because this is used oak whereas the other one's new oak in a rum cast which is well it wasn't new it's was finished in a rum cast so was new oak and then transferred to a rum cast um it's super dark color to me is irrelevant taste is what matters Black from the, from like Highland Park Magnus. There you go. Yeah, Kelly Jolt. That's kind of the way it goes. Shit to do. Um, personally, I'm trying to think of there are any colored whiskey bottles in Texas. Um, most are clear. I think. But as far as bottle color, I mean, do I care whether it's clear? Do I care if it's, you know, green or black, whatever color bottle is? I don't care. What I care, what I care about really and truly, I almost never really think about the color. I mean, I think it's cool to talk about the color. But as far as do I have an expectation of what it's going to taste like? Not really because um, it's irrelevant to me personally as a consumer what the color is. I really like... Uh, and like Jason points, green is probably the most functional because it keeps the UV light out. So I, I think taste-wise, excuse me, taste-wise is all that matters as far as whether it's, you know, great or not. I mean, I like to see the color. I think it's pretty. I think for streams, I think it's nice for you guys that will see the different colors in it. Uh, but I don't think that it's super important as far as flavor-wise. 
color doesn't translate to a flavor for me personally. To me, what matters is, does it taste good? I mean, if it's a two-year whiskey or it's a 30-year whiskey, does it taste good? That's all that really matters to me. And like, like Jason Coe says, always put your balls in a dark place, which is what I do. I mean, that's the safest way to do it. <laughs> put it in the trash for four hours later. That's funny. Now, we do not put any whiskey in the trash. So, in fact, so speaking of that, so when we have an event here, um, what we'll do is that our whiskey is not drank. We pour it to an infinity bottle. We have an infinity bottle of non-finished people's tasting glasses. We don't care. I mean, it's whiskey. Who cares? It's going to kill anything that's in there. So, I mean, same thing like, so when we went to Psalm School at the Wizard Academy, when we were done, because, oh my gosh, you just drink, the minimum one was 36. We had another 30, so we had 39 whiskeys while we were down there. That's just during class, okay? And that's not the vault evenings, all the crap. And we had let's see, four 175s of whiskey left. I mean, that people didn't drink. I mean, that's a lot of whiskey that didn't get. So what Daniel's going to do is redistill it all, and then we'll drink it. Because why not? It's whiskey. It's not going to go bad. So you might as well. So it's kind of fun. But yeah, so... I do love this whiskey, though. It's good. So, anyway. Yeah, so like I said, bottle color is really not that important to me. I've almost thrown a out the window before I know how you feel. Now, Jason, I would pay to see you throw a uh, out the window because that would be fun and funny. I remember so I was in college. I remember um, my professor, he's like, I got to show this guy's video. Because this dude, most of the time he was stoned. He was an awesome professor, but he was say seriously, the guy was stoned the vast majority of the time. And he's like, oh, I showed this guy this video. And so this is 2000. And so he, it's this guy just goes batshit at work. He just He takes out, why he's a baseball bat, I don't know. He just takes his baseball bat and just beats the ever-living shit out of the computer. I mean, there's, there's pieces of the computer going freaking everywhere. I mean, and it's hysterical. I, I just, it's absolutely hysterical. And he's like random thoughts by a professor of watching. He goes, if I had my way, we'd beat the shit out of computers just like this. And this is just, it's mayhem. It's hilarious, though. All right, so here's a good question. So, Donald wants to know, I gave you notes for the Jameson above, but I want to ask, what is the whiskey you're dying to try above all others? What am I dying to try above all others? Hmm. Well, this is a good question. What have I not had the luxury to try lately? Okay, I'll tell you what it is. I would really like to try an Imperial scotch that's what i really really want to try i want to try an imperial i want to try a dallas dew those are the ones that are on my unicorn list to try i'll get i'll give you that so that those are the two i really really want to try so so we're gonna wrap this up in six minutes guys because like i said i know we're still gotta go to bed most of us are in the united states or canada and it's you know you can only keep time for bed for sure so we're wrapping up for sure in six minutes I'm telling you, know, like I said, final thoughts from everybody, whatever they want to talk about. Six minutes, ask whatever you guys want. You know, I think we're good. There's a few people left in the chat. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us all night. I mean, it's been a fun. Uh, I really enjoy just chatting with everybody, having a good time. There's nothing more fun than talking about whiskey. I mean, there's really not. I mean, for me personally, this is a passion. I absolutely love whiskey. I love talking about it. I could talk about whiskey. For hours and hours and hours, the most of you are bored to tears. That's what I do. So it's funny. So talking about a funny story. So this weekend, uh, my daughter had a sleepover, and I was talking to the dad of the, uh, family, the family she was staying with this weekend. And he said, you know, hey, he tried to call. Excuse me. While uh, we are having our whiskey days with Westland the other night. Well, I was telling my daughter, I was like, I'm not talking to anybody's dad while I'm having a whiskey day. It's not going to happen. So 
uh, I said, I said, you know, so I heard, he's like, so I hear you have, you know, like whiskey and that's your whiskey channel. I was like, yeah. He's like, he's like, I didn't notice such a thing existed. I was like, yeah, we're on, you know, we're on YouTube. And so I said to him, uh, I said, so what kind of whiskey you drink? He's like, well, you know, I'm drinking Jim Bean. I like Evan Williams. That's about all I know. He goes, I was reading an article about Japanese whiskey. I heard it was pretty good. I was, he's like, um, yeah, you got a point, Jason. I know who's here this hour on a Monday. Could also be bored by whiskey. Good point, Jason. Very good point. So anyway, so he's like, you know, I, I really like Tyson. I like Japanese whiskey. It sounds pretty good, and amazing. I was like, oh, dude, I, you know, I can make that happen for you. So I went over there and I brought him. I think I think ten different Japanese. He watched our review on the. Uh, and the Toki and the uh, um, Hibiki Harmony. So he tried those. They're not tried. He watched the reviews. Like that sounds pretty good. So I brought the two of them. And then I brought um, I brought a Yamasaki Twelve, uh, Hakushu Twelve. Then I also brought the Nika Nika Giku, Nika Yoichi, Nika Pyramal. Uh, Nika, uh, the Nika Coffee Grand Giga Coffee Mall. So I had him try all those. And so I was really excited that ended up being out of all of that, he ended up liking the Hakushu 12 P, which was the Peated Scott, uh, Japanese was good. Unfortunately, it's discontinued. But, uh, he ended up really, oh, yeah, Jason, yeah, the Hakushu. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you get a chance to try the 12, awesome. And they're still on the shelf. You can find an 18. Yeah. Boom. Exactly. 18 is good stuff. Give that a try for sure. My passion is the Irish pot still. So, what's your favorite Irish pot still? Mine's a green pot still so on the arm, but it'd be the greatest Irish pot. Okay, so no, so I did try in the vault uh, when at the Psalm School the uh, Barton uh, Chateau Olivier Barton, which was very very good. Um, top probably three uh, behind the Red Breast Twenty One. And the Middleton Denagos, uh Virgin Oak series from uh, Batch One, Tree One, Virgin Irish Oak. Oh my gosh, that is the best damn freaking whiskey ever. As far as I'm concerned, that is top three best whiskeys I've ever had in my life. Uh, as that one is just mind blowing good. But Donald, did you ever get a chance to come down here? I will gladly share a drive on that with you from my friend for sure. So, anyways, we got a couple minutes here left. Um, so, like I said, I really enjoyed our hanging out with everybody tonight. So, yeah, one night we'll definitely do Japanese night. I think I think it'll be a fun one to do. We've got so next week. So let's talk about this next week. So next week, uh, Scott's from the Scott from the Kush Test Dummies will be here. We're doing space. We're going to be doing heavily sherried whiskeys next week. Uh, sorry, heavily shared scotches next week. Followed on the 19th of August with uh, Kyle from my Bourbon Blind. We're doing a Four Roses night. And then we're hoping, God willing, this works on the 26th of August to be doing the Sagamore Pick Night. So Sagamore, one of the one of the actual owners for Sagamore will actually be here talking to you guys about our Sagamore Pick, what it is to go on a barrel pick, all the Sagamore lineup. And talking about our pick, and hopefully all you guys that are local or can come down to Texas and get one, or if we can, you know, figure something out for you guys, get a chance to try it. We'll probably give them some giveaways, I'm sure. And then next week, uh, while we're at it, we're going to do our, we'll finally do our giveaway of the, um, of the of the of the, whisk, the barbecue rubs. We're going to give that away next week. We'll be giving that away. We've got everybody's had enough time now to watch this, watch the channel, make some comments on the barbecue episodes. So we're gonna be doing that. Not a rage again, child. Disgust for a freaking clueless driver. That's awesome. Um, so we'll be doing that. So tomorrow we're gonna release the Oak and Eden series of the beer uh, finish series. It's a Scotch ale called Iron Thistle from Raw, and the Dagum IPA from Raw, which is a raw, which is combined with a with a rye. So those will be coming out about eight o'clock tomorrow morning Central Time. Uh, we're setting those up. Um, come out. And then after that, uh, see either Thursday, excuse me, Thursday or Friday, I'll be launching the uh, review on Johnny Walker Black and Johnny Walker Double Black, which I think was a lot of fun. Um, so we're doing that. So a lot of cool episodes coming out. Um, our, so we'll have the pick. 
that we have in our coffee and whiskey. We'll be filming that soon. That'll be fun. We're still waiting for legal clarification on our Kona ice and whiskey. We're waiting for on, on Kona ice corporate to clear us to allow us to do a whiskey and pairing with Kona ice. It's going to be really awesome. So hoping for that to be coming out soon. So just want to appreciate you guys. Thanks for everybody coming out this evening and, uh, We'll see you guys uh, next week. All right. Thanks, everybody. You guys have a good night. Cheers.